Hello, hello, hello. It is the day before Friday, or as some people call Thursday. Hello, everyone. My name is Lewis, and I'm here with Omar. Hi, Omar. How you doing? Um, you can see his name tag up there is having a little problem there. Why, boy, why? Sorry. Get rid of that name tag. Sorry, Omar. I'll pop it up every so often. Today, we're going to be building a PC for Caleb Natali. I hope I pronounced his name right, because guess what? He's going to be on the show pretty soon, but we want to go over a couple things before we get him on the show. He's on standby. I just got to call him, and then once he's on, we're good. Hello, everyone across Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, and Twitter. So five platforms all at once. We haven't done a live build in a while, if you guys keep up with the channel or pop in from time to time. So... Might be a little rusty, but I think we'll be fine. We'll be fine, right, Omar? When's the last time you built a PC? He can't remember. He would have known that if he last. <laughs> he can't remember. Oh, what what are we doing? What are we doing? Anyways, before uh, we get Caleb on the show, let's go over the specs of this PC build. You can see the parts right there, but we're gonna go into more detail. Here are the specs of this PC build. I double checked them, triple checked them. Hopefully, they should be correct. Hopefully no one pulled a part under my nose and changed it all of a sudden, but this is what this PC should be. It's an Origin PC Millennium, powered by a Corsair RM 1000i series, 80 plus gold power supply. The motherboard is an MSI X299 Pro motherboard. The cooler, the all-in-one cooler, is a Corsair H150i Pro RGB all-in-one cooler, so there's actually RGB on the actual CPU block part. It's pretty cool. Uh, the Corsair LIQ RGB fans. Uh, Omar, if you want to hold those up. We have four of those, if I'm correct. And they're on the right of the table. Oh, right there. You see Omar in the bottom right hand of the screen if you can't. And there you go. There are the fans right there. The processor. Now, this is the uh, the surprise here. It is the Intel Core i9-7980XE. And that comes with 18 cores. This is not a gaming PC, friends. This is a PC designed to create all the cool special effects content that Caleb is a master of, but we'll talk about all that later on. The GPU is a single 11 ah, gigabyte. Yes, oh, someone came with a sub. Thank you, Atomic. I want to say six. <laughs> Atomic six, thank you very much. The GPU is the 11 gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, and the RAM, 64 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz DDR4 HyperX Predator RGB RAM. For storage, we have a whopping total of 16 terabytes of storage, two terabytes being a SSD or an SSD. It's a SATA one. And then for the actual hard drive storage, a 14 terabyte Seagate and Paracuda Pro. I was looking online to see if we had that on our configurator, and unfortunately we do not. We offer up to 10, so Caleb, you're a lucky person. Whew, those are the specs. What do we got on OriginPC.com? You can create your dream PC right now at OriginPC.com. Currently, during the month of February, we are focusing on our laptops. We're actually giving an incredible amount of discounts across all of our la laptops. So if you want to jump over at OriginPC.com and check out the deals, by all means, I will not stop you. Go check that out today until the end of February. And then these laptop deals are gone, from so I'm told. And all right, I think it's time to get Caleb on. Omar, you want to say hi to Caleb? Well, he's not on yet, but he'll be on soon. Give me a quick second, and I'll get him on. All right. Oh, by the way, if, Chad, if you have questions for me or Caleb, because once we uh, start talking to Caleb, uh, by all means, shoot them. Right now, I won't read the questions just yet, so hold your questions. Wait till we, we get the first discussion going. And then, by all means, if you've got a good question, go ahead and shoot from me. Make sure it's a good one. So, I know people say there's no stupid questions. I don't know, chat. You somehow managed to prove that wrong. <laughs> I've seen some pretty... Uh, I'm not going to call them names, but some pretty out there questions. All right, let's get Caleb on board. Let's see. Waiting. If you all, if you all of a sudden start hearing noises, you know that means he's on. Oh, you can get started. Go. Go, 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 go. All right, we're still waiting for Caleb. The internet is not being compliant, and I am dying inside. Hmm. Let 
Let me do a little something here real quick. Oh, look, it's it's Omar's tag. Yay. All right, let me reset the call. For whatever reason, it's not going through. Video. Come on, Discord. I'm going to answer some questions really quick here while we're trying to get Caleb. Will you guys be adding N.2 soon? So okay, the current setup does not. Oh, wait, wait. I was best about to finish that question, but I think we got Caleb. Caleb, you there. Hey, how's it going? All right, give me a quick second to full screen you. And there you are. And your name tag's about to pop up. There you are. Hey, Caleb, welcome to the live build. Now Omar's actually saying hello. I'm not sure How's if you it missed it. Uh, we just went over the specs of the build, and Omar is off to the races to build your origin PC Millennium. Uh, so a brief introduction. Caleb is a master of special effects, and you might have seen his work across Instagram, TikTok, and a lot of other places, too. But Caleb, a lot of people, um, from my understanding, at least from social, not too familiar with the work, but they most likely have seen your work. So Caleb, a quick introduction, if you please. Yeah, so I'm, uh, like you said, VFX artist. I mostly do social media-based videos, um, whether that be for my personal account or for different brands or artists. And um, I usually tend to make like uh, video magic kind of based videos. Um, between like 10 and 30 seconds mm -hmm. and yeah I've worked with uh, a lot of different brands and and artists that I, I, I've looked up to over the years so that's been a really cool uh, thing for me to do and I actually have um, your pages up ready to go we're actually gonna go over your pages and some of the work uh, later on in the oh, stream because cool. I was like oh, I gotta show because the thing is if you say oh I'm a special effects person it's like I want to see the special effects we got some of right. them uh, <laughs> the latest at least from uh, TikTok and Instagram so uh, just stay tuned to that. But uh, so one of the reasons you need a new PC is obviously for improved performance when rendering and creating these special effects shots. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you mind telling us what you're working on with now or no? <laughs> yeah, I'm currently um, I have like an i buy power PC. Mm -hmm. I have like the um, 2080 RTX um, NVIDIA card. OK, uh, not right though. Um, I have like 64 gigs of RAM that, what do I have? I actually don't know. Do you know what CPU? That's really the, the key thing, the CPU. Do you remember the CPU? I have like the i7. Okay. I, I feel bad. I don't really know. Don't worry. You just said i7. Well. Yeah. And we're giving you an i9 with 18 cores. Yes. So 18 cores Very definitely good. benefits uh, software. You use, uh, I'm assuming, After Effects? Correct me if you don't. I do. Okay. Yeah, you do After use After Effects. Effects. Awesome my go-to for most things I do. So this is a very After Effects friendly PC. So you should yes. definitely enjoy fast render times. I know actually here at work, I use a CPU similar to the one you're getting. It's, a it's like a couple of generations behind though. Right. Um, but it definitely helps with After Effects stuff that I do and Premiere stuff as well. Sounds great. So <laughs> I'm excited that you're excited because it's going to be exciting. Because the thing is, you'll realize when you spend less time rendering and stuff, you'll be like, oh man, I have more time to focus and you know work on my edits and do all yeah. this cool stuff. The so. thing I'm most excited about right now is my current setup. Um, when I'm working on beefier projects with a lot of effects going on, mm -hmm. I end up just sitting around waiting for just, you know, a second long render to yep. just uh, be able to preview it. And then I get distracted with my phone or something like that. Yep. Next thing I know, I've wasted like five minutes not working. And then I forget where I am in the project, kind of have to reorient myself. So hopefully, like, faster render times and uh, less waiting around for previews will help me kind of stay in the zone when I'm when I'm working on stuff. And that's where the 18 cores will step in, hopefully. So Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we got all this beefy rig that Omar is currently putting together with the 64 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and we got, we're throwing in some RGB in there as well. I don't know how much do you are you familiar with RGB or do you like that sort of stuff? I do. Okay. Well, we have the IQ system set up. We're gonna, it's going to be set up for you. And with IQ, you can customize the lighting to your own preference. Um, have you used that software before or no? No. Okay. No, so it'll come pre-installed. Don't worry. Um, and there's many like setups you can do, like a rainbow one and different setups uh, for the lighting. So I'm excited. Quick, quick question for you. Yes. On my screen right now, I'm currently just seeing like... Um, Oh, know, yeah, you'll see that. Yeah, don't screen. worry. If you want to see us, just go to twitch.tv slash um, origin PC. Oh, cool. yeah, let me just yeah, and you'll see the actual stream. Just make sure you mute it. Yes. If, if there's any speakers, because <laughs> then we hear double. And that's, right. I want that. That's double. Cool. Yeah. 
Okay, I have them both up now. All so right, perfect. Now you can see the actual build, and you can see my face. So hello. I'm going to do a little wave here so you can see me doing that. Yeah, sorry about that. It's just the way that we have it set up for Discord. It makes it easier. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. All right, so we got that. I'm actually going to hop over to some of your work, and if you don't mind, maybe a little bit of insight to some of it. Because, again, yeah. special effects is your your thing. And I've seen a, a bunch of your videos already. I'm like, you're good. You're really, really good. So oh, my hat off that. to you, because I've done some attempts at special effects and very simple stuff, but you definitely take it to another level. And I want people to see exactly what you do. Omar's getting the case prepped. Uh, we'll hop back to the, to the build. I got the stream too, so then I can watch it. All right. Cool, but the stream is actually going to show the the, uh, the thing, so you'll see um, the clips on the stream. Okay. Perfect. All right. Give me a second here. Hold on. Actually, one thing I noticed is that the specs in the bottom are incorrect, so let me remove that. I'll fix those later on in the stream. I'll actually fix them while we're doing this conversation, guys. So just stick around and take a look. All right, so let me do some magic over here. I'm going to hide Caleb. You'll be here, Caleb. It's just I'm going to do some messing around to make sure uh, everyone can see what I'm seeing. All right. Now we're gonna go to the TikTok page, and then I think we're good. All right. And here is your TikTok. Can you see it? Let me know if you can see it. Yeah. Yep. Looking at it right now. All right. Awesome. Let me hide that there too. All right. So let's see. I don't. I don't know which one to start with. Honestly, I was like, there's so many you can go from. Uh, but I guess let oh, me scroll. If you go down kind of far towards the beginning. Um, the, the one of 72 million views right there. That's kind of what got me started on this app in particular. Okay, let's see if we can get it up and running on our end. All right, I'm going to turn on the sound. Hopefully there's no music there. All right, yeah. there we go. All right, we should be good. Where'd he go? Where did he go? <laughs> this is awesome. So it's a perfect loop, so if you're watching this, uh, you'll see that it's actually a full loop. And the sound effects are fantastic, too. So you're just gonna watch it one Thank more time. I appreciate that. That is courtesy of Andrew Kramer's uh, sound design pack he released a while ago. Very cool. Uh, do you know how long that took? Yeah, so that was probably, the shoot itself, you know, I, I probably only did three takes of it, probably like maybe five minutes, 10 minutes at the most. I probably spent maybe i don't know 20 minutes just like choreographing the order of how i wanted to go about shooting it mm -hmm. like i said five ten minutes to shoot it and then the actual post-production on it was probably five to six hours if i'm remembering correctly mm -hmm. um the hardest thing is obviously just a uh, hand-drawn animation which oh yeah I'm for sure because that, that's so, every single frame has to be yeah. now i i actually cheated it i did every other frame i did it uh, 15 ah frames. but the eye can't notice that i mean you know yeah. it and now we know it but the eye typically can't notice that unless you and, really in that video in particular it. what i used for for the um the initial like i don't know what you would call it, like the orb kind of floating there in the middle um i used reference from like a nasa clip i saw of like an astronaut with uh water and air oh like, that's cool yeah i can see that there. yeah to give it kind of a little bit of life um and then it's it's kind of some rough animation for sure, but then I, I use that mixed with some rotoscoping techniques I have to kind of hide like the shadow by my feet as I'm disappearing. Mm -hmm. Um so you don't have like this big jump in in, in the footage before I come back in. I'm trying to think if there's anything else particularly. Oh, I just saw the shadow effect because that thing that's the cool thing is yeah. as someone that works on video stuff and then you look at someone else's video stuff, you're like, oh, I see what you did. <laughs> or at least to some <laughs> extent, like, oh, I, there's the shadow, you know, disappearing, the, you know, the tricks you're talking about. So that's for pretty sure. cool. Yeah. Let's see. I feel like we can just go through this the entire time, but I know that you also have an Instagram as well. And I'll be honest, they're pretty similar videos, if not the same in most cases. Yeah. But uh, I see we have a little uh, Will Smith action going on here, because if I'm correct, you do work with Will Smith on some of his clips, right? Yeah, I have. Um, so that was a really cool opportunity. His company, Westbrook, reached out to me a few months ago. Oh, sorry. I came all the way to Budapest. Oh, I ain't get my little Willow no present. Nothing. <laughs> this will work. You like that, baby? Very cool. So now I can continue. I'm sorry. The, the audio immediately took over for Instagram. Oh, yeah. You're fine. 
So you're working with uh, Westbrook Studio, which is Will Smith's company, so, correct? Yeah. So they they reached out about possible ah, yes, teamwork, um, which I was obviously thrilled about. And then while I was in the middle of um, like kind of thinking through different concepts, they reached out about possibly flying out to Budapest with them. I think he was doing like a press tour at the time, mm -hmm. um, and they just wanted to come up with a ton of TikTok concepts. So we probably shot like between between like ten and fifteen concepts while we were out there. I I ended up editing three of them i uh, passed off a few to another editor and and some of them just didn't come out the way we wanted them to mm. but uh yeah so that was a super cool opportunity for me for sure yeah it's definitely awesome and especially that it's not just your work going to your own channels but it's also on other channels as well which is i think right. pretty great yeah, yeah that, that's definitely really rewarding to see your work go out to you know like you're saying other people's channels see how mm -hmm. people respond usually it's good sometimes it's negative but <laughs> Don't listen to the haters. <laughs> I keep seeing like uh, a lot of, I think it was, there's a documentary or something of like people in comments, like the comment section, just like torturing people. It's like, no, don't listen to them. Right. I right. mean, I work closely with the uh, Twitch chat. You guys are great today, but normally sometimes Twitch chat can be a little uh, hectic, if that's a word I can use. <laughs> um, but you just ignore it. You, you go with the positive and ignore the negative. Yeah, I try to just like, you know, make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to not jump too much on a trend, mm -hmm. uh, especially with TikTok because trends are a big deal uh, and try to make stuff that I'm actually like, you know, that I want to make, that I'm comfortable making, that match like the branding I'm trying to have. Um, I used to make like a lot of meme related stuff too, which I still do for other brands, but mm -hmm. my own page, I try to keep a little bit more that kind of like video magic looping kind of stuff plenty of video magic so for those of you that want to see more you can check out at caleb i'm gonna pronounce your last name please let me know if i did correct Nat natalie yes all right caleb natalie on tiktok instagram and you do have a twitter but that's more of like a personal thing from my understanding yeah, yeah. i, I kind of use my twitter for just like sharing behind the scenes yeah. sharing like random stuff i'm working on but yeah my tiktok and my instagram definitely more portfolio yeah so you can see all the cool video magic at work I like uh, actually one of them. This is not necessarily video magic, but uh, the mural that you're standing behind is pretty oh, awesome. Yeah. That was uh, created by your wife, from my understanding, or at least for, according to the comment. Awesome! All of us here yeah. love video games at uh, Origin PC. So when we, uh, I saw yeah. it, I'm like, oh, that's great. That's really nice. And that took a really long time because if you watch the videos, oh, yeah. it's, it's like it's different days, and you can tell because of the way uh, what your wife is wearing. He's like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> and so. she did all that when she was like, I think she was seven months pregnant there. Wow. I was like, we can just wait till you know our son's born and she was like no it's fine I, don't, I like doing it so i think she ended up spending between 50 and 60 hours on that wow well it came out fantastic so thank you yeah again i mean i love looking at it every day most <laughs> people want they think it's like for our nursery for our son but i'm mm -hmm. like no that's for my <laughs> yeah. and there's the mario right there all right perfect all right we're gonna jump back to the build so that was a cool uh looking at it. again if you guys want some more actually i'm gonna try to share links in the chat so people can take a look at the build. Don't worry, we'll back to the screen. Omar, hi. We missed you, buddy. Um, let me mess around with the cameras over here and get Caleb on screen. Uh, Omar, we swap to the other cameras to see what you're doing in the inside of the case. We're going to add Caleb back. There you are. There you are. What's Perfect. That? All right, so now you can see the build. Uh, Omar's currently working on uh, adding the power supply. The motherboard's already mounted. The RAM's already mounted. Uh, the processor's already uh, in, or inside the PC. So for the most part, our builds go around two hours or so. Um, and if there's nothing too complex, typically the complex builds involve multiple <laughs> RGB fans. And of course, the wiring is the hardest part. So uh, Caleb, have you built a PC before or no? I have not. I okay. thought about it for my last PC, and then I chickened out last minute. <laughs> but here you go. This is a professionally built system. Uh, honestly, I know that you probably have to head out in a little bit, but I was going to say, when you the full video is up on YouTube, by all means, take a look at the last part of it, and you'll see that uh, the full and complete system, especially the wiring. The wiring is going to be the the key part because you see we have a bunch of little sections there for cables to go through which is definitely more than other pc cases from my understanding um i know that uh i was working with a corsair case and there's plenty of areas there but not as much as uh the millennium case 
So, all right. So I'm going to open up the floor to the people. I see uh, chat. Chat's there. Chat's chilling. Um, but I will open it up to questions for me and for Caleb. While we just have a casual conversation here about PCs, special effects, video editing, and stories in general. Actually, we have a question right here. What's the hardest part of a build? Uh, Omar, I'll let you answer that one. Because I have built some PCs before. I can tell you my answer, but Omar's has uh, more experience on the under the belt. Making it look pretty. Making it look pretty. That is the hardest part. I can. That's a good. That's a good one. Um, for me, it's definitely the wiring and the cable management. I'd have to agree with that um, aspect. Because I know for me, for my builds, I just did two builds was definitely making sure the wires weren't a mess. Because the problem is when you build a PC and you need to change something, if the wires are a mess, then you have to like rewire everything, and that's kind of scary. Not yeah. scary, but it's just you know, it's a hassle. Uh, people are asking me why SATA instead of NVMe. Uh, that's just, I think, the way that uh, the team designed it. Um, I think there is a support for NVMe drive. Uh, but Caleb, if you want to talk to our team afterwards to see if there's a possibility to add an M.2 NVMe drive, that's totally an option okay. too. But just talk to them to see if we have any uh, available in our inventory. It's really bright, that Barracuda, that 14 terabyte. 14 terabyte, <laughs> ugh. Every time I say that, I'm just like... That's crazy. <laughs> see, for gamers, 14 terabytes is overkill. But for right. content creators like yourself, Caleb, that is... I might I might even say it might not be enough. Because <laughs> yeah, video well, files can get big thing. too. Is, yeah, no matter no matter how much you have of something, you can find ways to like push it all the way to the limit. Oh yeah, for sure. Whether it's like, I mean, you don't really do you work with 4K footage for the short videos or no? Uh, yeah. So for my own videos, personally, I try to stay away from it. A mm -hmm. lot of clients will want to use 4K, which I totally understand. Yeah. But uh, usually, I'll put you know 1920, 1080. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I know I was helping out um, our team with. Uh, 4k footage and they were like we don't know how to work with 4k footage i'm like i have some you know experience with 4k but normally i work with 1080p footage right and content I, mean, I think i think the the new lion king remake was rendered out at like 1920 by 1080 mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken i think it's not just like i think almost cg movies when i was doing research at 4k content it's just that 4k content is so massive that they typically render oh, it yeah. either at 1920 or at a 2k resolution right. and then they upscale it to 4k so right. when you buy a 4K disc, especially special effects heavy movies, uh, like an Avengers movie, for example, that is loaded with special effects shots. So it's uh, rendered at 2K, but upscaled to 4K. So it looks really pretty, but it's not true 4K resolution. So fun facts to those of you in chat. Caleb already knows that, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> all right, everyone else. Uh, all right, so uh, Kevin, Origin PCZO, uh, says, wait, so the Mario room is not the nursery. What room is it? Caleb, take it away. That is my office. This is my office here. Let me get out of the way so you can see it better. Actually, go. let me uh, full screen it. So, Caleb, oh, if you yeah. want to step out for a little bit, and then we'll, we'll full screen the shot. There Here's it the is. Good. There it is. That is the office. And you can, uh, oh, Kevin, wow. if you go on uh, Caleb's TikTok or Instagram, you can see the video of how it was created. So, there you go. I run to go the back to the The coolest part is watching when my wife was doing the... Uh, the detail level because it's initially like the flat colors and then she's coming back with the shadow and the highlights that's mm -hmm. always my favorite part to to see happen because mm -hmm. like there's just so many little things there because like oh yeah from our distance and from the video it's like you see it but when you have to look closer on it it's like you can see all the little details and it's really cool really right. cool the hardest part was trying to figure out what should be in it because you know there's a limited size and we want to put different elements that made sense and then of course once it blew up on tiktok people had a lot of commentary about what was wrong about the setup and oh no like no that. don't listen to them trust me because right, honestly right, yeah right. like they're like oh actually the way the question mark blocks are the, like this block the clouds aren't right. the same the, the glass and the clouds aren't the same. <laughs> like they're gonna hit you with all those comments i've seen them i've witnessed them in person and it kills me I actually have a story about that. Uh, one year I went to a convention dressed as a very light Spider-Man. So when I say light, I was just wearing gloves and a mask with a nice shirt. So it was the illusion that I was wearing a Spider-Man suit underneath. I didn't have a Spider-Man suit underneath. Uh, so I was just, you know, walking around Spider-Man, but people enjoyed it. Overall, like 98 per people that saw it, they're like, oh, that's a really cool, like, Spider-Man setup. It's almost like, is Peter going to work, right? Kind of sort of, like, <laughs> taking off the suit, which I, that was what I was going for. 
Mm-hmm. And then one time, I was just walking around talking to one of the, the guests of the convention, and then all of a sudden this guy just comes up to me. He's like, which Spider-Man are you? I'm like, <laughs> I'm just I'm just Spider-Man. Um, just I just felt attacked for that brief moment. Even the guy that I was talking to, he was like, what's his problem? Like, it's, it's Spider-Man. It doesn't have to be a specific Spider-Man, but it's just your interpretation <laughs> of Spider-Man. And it's just kind of annoying per se, but you know, you just, you know, shove it off and keep on going. Cause it's, you know, it's, it's an artist style. It doesn't have to be precise. Exactly. Um, so that's, you know, your wife's interpretation of the Mario. And for me, I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, ignore okay. the haters, ignore the haters. I love it. I mean, I wish I had something like that in my room. That's great. So wait, what was Someone said that was a mistake. What was a mistake? Someone's saying I was a mistake or something was a mistake. Don't worry about it. Um, all right, so there's Omar messing around with the case. And I believe, yeah, he's adding the the hot swap base. So if you need more storage, Caleb, uh, Omar's oh holding up the hot swap cage. So if you want to add more 14 terabyte hard drives, there's plenty of space for them. So you can just slide them on in to the dock and add them to your PC. I mean, if you need them, of course. I mean... Time right, will tell right. if the 14 terabyte is enough, but yeah, we'll I think see you how long that goes before I need to upgrade that. Yeah, I need to I need to step out for a second. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, sure. All right, Caleb's gonna step out for a quick second. I'm gonna hide him there. All right, chat. It's just you, and it's us. Hi, Omar. <laughs> the costume. Hey man, how's a light costume? What what do you want me to do? My budget was like two bucks. <laughs> so, oh, Caleb's back. That was really fast. Yeah, my brother is in town. He brought me some coffee. Oh, there you go. Cool. Very nice. Good with the coffee. Coffee. Yeah, we're just installing that. So for 2020, what are your plans in terms of projects? Do you have more like uh, client work or more personal stuff? Obviously, obviously, with someone like in your stature, you're probably working on stuff all the time. But is there anything like yeah. you want to talk about? So, so for this year in particular, um, the first, the first two months, I guess, since we're almost at the end of it. I've been kind of crazy because we were waiting for our second son to be born, uh, my wife and I, and- mm-hmm. Congratulations, by the way, because you can see that on Instagram, so congratulations. Yeah, there's a bunch of complications early on. We were, we were basically in the hospital for like 10 days with, um, and it was pretty scary, but now he's doing much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josiah is home with us now. And so that that was definitely the, you know, the beginning of the year for us. Um, looking forward though, for the rest of the year work-wise, um, I'm trying to do a lot more personal videos as well. Last mm-hmm. year, I took on a ton of client work, so I didn't have as much time to kind of uh, craft as many videos as I wanted for my page. So this year, I'm definitely going to be trying to do more of that, uh, taking on more sponsored work. So they'll be my videos and, you know, my branding, but at the same time, they will be ads for different companies mixed in with the ones just for fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also there's, there's a lot of um, like client work that won't be for me at all. That'll just be, I'm creating the content and handing it over to them for their accounts. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything in particular. I, I had to turn a lot of stuff down. Like I was saying the first two months, just because of everything with our son. Yeah. Um, but there's a few things lined up coming up in March and after, um, I think like two different music videos that I'm, I'm going to be kind of supervising slash concept creating for, uh, that we're going to shoot in, in March and so one is like kind of a, a space themed video so we're heavily going to rely on CG for sure for that one mm-hmm. so hopefully if I have this PC by then this will go a long way for sure oh yeah um, for sure and I, I think that's all I have like locked in for right now other than that it's just a lot of like in talks projects and I hate like talking about projects that are not set in stone yet, oh yeah for sure because NDAs after, and right. trying to keep it secret right right we all know about those NDAs here in the office. We always yeah, have to be like, uh oh, this is a thing that we should not talk about because we know stuff now. <laughs> right. <laughs> so hold on, I see someone says someone what is Caleb getting in the build? Oh, let's go over the specs. I, I love talking about the specs. We're gonna jump over and talk about this. All right. Here are the specs one more time. I'll be more than happy to talk about them later on. But uh, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, Caleb, if you caught the specs earlier. But here they are. This is an Origin PC Millennium powered by a Corsair RM 1000i series power supply. That's a gold power supply. The motherboard is an MSI X39 Pro motherboard designed for that Intel Core i9 7980 XE CPU with 18 cores. 
Uh, the core is coming in at 2.6 gigahertz, but one core with a turbo boost of 4.2 gigahertz. And uh, of course, scaling down from that. The GPU is a single 11 gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, 64 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz DDR4 RAM, and of course, 16 terabytes of storage, two of those being the OS drive, and then 14 terabytes for uh, other storage as well. And of course, we have that uh, five bay hot swap. So if you need more storage, it's there. Yeah. It's a pretty beef build. Uh, someone uh, asked how much does that cost. Unfortunately, I know some of these parts we don't offer on our site, so I can't spec it out on our site. I can try specking out a similar build, but my estimation, just based on the processor and the graphics card and RAM alone, is just probably close to a $4,000 or $5,000 build between that range. Again, I, that's the ballpark. I could probably specify more if I work with the configurator or if I uh, mess with a PC part picker. So, and again, the, it's because of CPU. That CPU is a very beefy CPU. So, yep, yep. Caleb, any thoughts? I mean, it's, it's literally like, I don't want to say double, but it feels like it's double what I currently am working with, like, spec-wise. I mm -hmm. mean, the RAM's pretty similar, but everything else is just a complete upgrade. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad. Storage-wise, I, I don't even, like, right <laughs> now, I can't even imagine needing that much storage. But once again, like, I'll find a way. No, you, you can definitely find a way. And again, the easy access uh, hot swap bay there makes it easier. Instead of having to open up the computer, you can just use the hot swap bay. I know for, for sure. me personally, when I've worked a hot swap bays, I'm like, oh, man, this is so much easier. Like, let's say, like, oh, I'm out of storage or I need to, like, transfer uh, to a new hard drive. I just open it up, slide out the tray, insert hard drive, put it in, run the software, and you're good. I'm like, whoa, that was easy. Um, I know that uh, currently the trends in computing, uh, or at least computers, uh, custom computers, is more leaning to smaller computers. So our Millennium is one of our larger PCs. The Genesis is the, is the largest PC build that we offer. Uh, but there are some benefits to that larger build, especially if you take advantage of that front part of the computer. Omar, if you want to point it to like the front part where all the bays are. Yeah, so that's like the front. And of course, they got the bays there. Because I know people always say like, oh, where's the disk driver? People don't need disk drives anymore. But in some cases, some people might need disk drives, whether they want to do burning or they need a media reader. They have the all-in-one 40 meter readers, so you can add those as well. So, me personally, I like smaller builds. Uh, my build is more of a mid-tower. Uh, I got a Corsair case, and that's pretty nice. But uh, the Millennium build's pretty... It's hefty, but it's powerful. Yeah, so. I personally don't mind, like, a larger PC. I have the space for it here. In college, I definitely was trying to look for, like, the smallest build possible. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to say, someone's actually asking you, uh, is your favorite color red? <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, it depends. When it comes to, like, tech-related things in general, I love black and red. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Um, but in any other circumstance, I think light blue, like teal color, is, is my favorite. Oh, there you go. There's your favorite color answer there, chat. Uh, someone is also asking, uh, why choose Intel? Caleb, did you choose the parts, or did our team uh, spec it out for you? So, like, when we were initially talking about the idea of doing a build, I was honest and said, like, I, I know a little bit about parts, but I'm going to, you know, defer to what you guys think would be better for mm -hmm. for what I do in particular, which I told them, like, what it was. Mm -hmm. and, and these were the parts they came back to me with. So, okay, so our team chose believe, Intel. Yeah, yeah, I believe they said that would be the best fit for what i do but i i will plead ignorant <laughs> so in our uh sometimes I have conversations with our chat and one of the most common questions is amd versus intel i like them both i see the benefits of both there you can't go wrong with either in my opinion right. um it's not like I've, we're in only a... used, I've only used intel for the last like what nine years of doing the effect stuff mm -hmm. but that's not because yeah i mean amd is probably great i've just never used it yeah because uh, AMD's latest uh, processors, uh, the Ryzen, and then of course the Ryzen Threadrippers, um, are pretty in hand are pretty handy for uh, professionals and uh, content creators, and gamers also like them as well. So they're getting a rep or rapport within the community, and you'll see a lot of people defending or even claiming that it's like, no, you gotta go with AMD. But again, <laughs> we here at Origin PC, we love them both. You can go on our site and customize your PC with both. So, right. so whether you want an Intel chip or you whether you want an AMD one, it's there. So, 
Uh, let's see here. Oh, we got people coming in. <laughs> Someone's saying AMD equals superior. See? Yeah, you have people uh, supporting their their choice. Uh, what's up to me? Hello. Nothing much. Just here chatting with Caleb. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Everyone else is just talking about the CPU stuff. But Omar is about to add these fans, if I'm correct. Or Wait, is that the fan kit or the power supply? I think that's a fan kit, right? Yeah, it's a fan kit. Yeah, so we briefly talked about it earlier, um, Caleb. That's the uh, RGB fans. So those are the LL fans. So there's, I'm trying to remember, I want to get this right. There are 16 LEDs inside the fan. And they're all individually, so you can change their colors individually uh, using software, uh, the IQ software. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, for a total, of... build, I think there's like there's like a little slot, like a little slat of light, and that's mm -hmm. it. But there's no, like as I'm looking at it right now, the fan, nothing, everything, nothing. Yeah, there's like just like there's a little build on the front. It's like a shape, and it lights mm -hmm. up, and that's about it. No, so the, the fans definitely we'll be... help light it up for sure. And of course, the um, the CPU cooler also is RGB enabled, and that's connected to it as well. The RAM is also RGB. Um, I think you need a separate software to do that one, but. The fans and the CPU cooler are all controlled by IQ. I like IQ okay. software. I've been using it at home. And uh, I know it's really cool when you can like customize it and give it like maybe a Spider-Man look. So it's like the red, the blue, and a little bit of white, a little bit of uh, dark. And it looks really cool. Or the other one that I like is the Doom-inspired one. So it make, makes it look more uh, kind of like the game. So it's pretty cool. I know gamers sometimes like customizing it to their favorite games. And actually, IQ does support games as well. So, um, more commentary about the AMD choice as well. <laughs> People really, really, the thing is, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to like, the AMD processors are fantastic. Just for this build, we went with uh, Intel. So, all right, let's see here. I'm just looking through, making sure I'm caught up and I didn't miss anything, but I think we're good. People are calling uh, Omar a hand model. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, or the guy building the rig should become a hand model. Yeah, oh, there you go. Now he's showing off his hands. Da, 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 da. When you give a PC to the person, you can also keep keyboard and mouse. So typically, we do not. Um, on our site, when uh, you buy a PC, you just get the PC, but we do give the option to buy an extra mouse or an extra keyboard if you need it. Because mm. it's safe to assume that if you're buying a PC from us, you at least already have that already. Or you would rather get the keyboard and mouse elsewhere. I'm pretty so. happy with my. I, I have this like, I think it's by Logitech. It's like mm -hmm. this ergonomic mouse. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It it took me a, a minute to get used to, but it feels really comfortable, especially for like long hours. So. Yeah, and you do editing, so you're. I can see you there, just like being like all the time. Yeah. So I'm trying to make the switch over to using like um, the Wacom tablet, like the pen tablet, mm -hmm. for a lot of the effects related stuff. It's kind of hard to make it, but I'm, I'm kind of like 50-50 right now between the two. Uh, you, you horrified the chat, by the way, Caleb. <laughs> oh, with the mouse? Yeah, everyone, everyone's freaking out. They're like, oh. <laughs> I mean, I, they, 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 you guys mean that in a nice way, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I used to use like a gaming mouse for all my VFX stuff. It died on me. It stopped working, so then I switched out with that one. But if it works, it works. So, and yeah. you can you knock I mean, out those helpful. videos, and yeah. it works. I know. I mean, I know that um, Linus sometimes does some videos on like random my, Linus Tech Tips. Uh, he does some right. videos on like really crazy mouse designs and keyboards right. as well. And the stuff that people make are it's out there. It is definitely yeah. out there. And I, sometimes I miss the the ball mouse. Some people really like ball mouse for gaming, though. I'm not sure if anyone in chat has experience with uh, using ball mouse for gaming, but I know the ball mouse is pretty popular still in some circles. Have you used ball mouse? I oh. have. I'm not a fan personally, yeah. but it looks cool. <laughs> Someone in chat, ball mouse. Ugh. Oh, man. I'm just looking make sure everything's caught up there. So, Caleb... Last year, you started TikTok, right? Or was it yeah, last year or twenty? Okay, May or April, I started. Yeah. And you, if you've grown pretty quickly too, so TikTok. Yeah. I know, I know. Don't give me that side look, chat. I know if the second I say TikTok, you're gonna give me the look. Of, oh, TikTok. <laughs> but TikTok's growing. It might not be for you, but it's a perfect platform for Caleb's work. So Caleb, take it away. 
it's a massive it's like a massive app right now uh, it's funny because i feel like most people that make videos on tiktok initially were not planning on making videos on tiktok mm -hmm. and then you know their stuff did well there and then they started posting more got brand deals through it whatever so yeah i um i had like a hundred followers and i posted that one i showed you with like the orb where i grabbed it consumed me and then it looped um and i had a hundred followers i posted that and it blew up out of nowhere and then overnight it went from like a hundred to i think it was like one hundred seventy thousand the next day um but anyway all that to say like you can be discovered like with zero following there which is really unique i feel like where other apps you kind of have to it's like a slow build or, or something has to happen for that to, to come about. But there was like, you know, every video has a chance to go viral on its own, regardless of mm -hmm. following size or, or anything like that. So that was, that was pretty cool. Cause previously you did your stuff on Instagram and yeah, yeah. I was doing vines. Back yeah. Vine. That's right. Art. Yeah. Rip. And, uh, <laughs> and that was my biggest platform. I think it was like a little under 600,000 there when it ended. Um, and then nothing really transferred I, on Instagram. I had like 20,000. Um, so most of it was like the contacts I had from Vine is where I got a lot of my work after Vine until TikTok became mm -hmm. more prevalent. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your TikTok explosion <laughs> and Appreciate hopefully that. some more <laughs> with uh, the PC and future videos and projects. Yeah. Hopefully I can crank out videos much faster now too. So that'll definitely help. Hopefully, hopefully. I'm excited to see what you do next because the stuff that you put out there, again, for those of you watching on chat, go check out, uh, ja uh, I was going to say Jacob, but it's Caleb, Jacob, Caleb, <laughs> Caleb's work on TikTok and Instagram. And the thing is, there's you design them to be loops or some of your clips to be loops. I like tried perfect to, loops. Yeah. yeah. But then others are, you know, typical, you know, little short little video magic videos. Yeah. So... Back when, like, I started making vines, I, I tried to do a mix of that and, like, try to do, like, short skits. Mm -hmm. And then I realized the stuff that I was more suited for was just, like, video magic. I tried not to talk in my videos to give it more of a kind of, like, universal appeal that you don't have to understand the language to get the, the idea of the video. Yeah. Also, I'm very insecure about my voice. So those two things together. You got a good like voice, a Caleb. Don't let him hate. Don't let him hate. <laughs> got to flex it. I know for a while I but, hated my own voice too, but I got I grew used to it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just have to get used to it. Um, I wish I could post some of the stuff I was making before any of these apps were like when I was like 12, 13, when I was starting to make these VFX videos and how bad they were, just to show like the progress. Mm -hmm. But I can't find them. They're all on hard drives. I I've either lost or they're destroyed. I don't know. Oh man, there is some yeah. uh, hard drive recovery software. I was actually messing with some of them for myself because I accidentally formatted a drive. Uh oh. But there's really not too many important files because I already backed everything up. It's just more of just like, uh, it's just inconvenient. Right. So it's mo For me, it's mostly like the stuff between 12 and 15, I want to say. And then everything after that's kind of backed up. So I have, have it somewhere. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting to see like your earlier work. And then, yeah. or it's maybe stupid. you can steal this video. They maybe use some of that earlier work and then transition into like a modern one. Right. Like right, kind of like right, a... Maybe. A growth. Yeah, I was say, maybe taking footage from like one of my first videos with the concept I had and actually implementing what I know now yeah. to that video. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, there you go. If you can find the footage and you know get it, that's that's a good idea. It's you know kind of like a throwback almost, and then modernize it. Pretty I know cool. I've seen that with uh, artists. It's not, I'm not sure if you've seen that like online that people like show their first drawing, which is like kind of ugly but you know they put their work into it and then their right. new drawing which is like the same uh, subject or subject matter and it looks amazing it's like the progress right. of you know just you know practicing something and putting your time and effort into it and the growth so pretty cool. oh, let's see I, some people are talking about uh, our conversation let me catch up here uh, da, 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 da. it's a matter of the house and the top slot and bottom slot uh Jay Diesel, uh, answer that or give me that question again. I don't quite understand. Uh, oh, GPU. Oh, so, sorry. Uh, does it matter if the GPU is in the top slot or bottom slot? We prefer to put them in the top. And sometimes motherboards have the the thick. I, Omar, correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes they have like that thick, uh, the metal support for the GPU so it doesn't sag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. 
some people are lamenting TikTok and Vine. They're like, Ugh, I'm not that. That's not my kind of platform. But it might not be for you, but no. it's for a lot of other people. <laughs> Da, 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 da. So someone says videos are easy to make, five seconds. And I am here to disagree with that statement because sometimes some of these videos can take a lot of work, especially if there's a ton of special effect shots and stuff For happening in the background to make sure. it look like that. Caleb, please explain to the people that a simple five second video yeah. <laughs> can take a lot of work. Because I can yeah. do it, but you're a professional with that, so take it away there. I think like the longest I've spent on a six second video was 29 hours for like a six second video and uh let me just make sure yeah and then like obviously if it's longer it can take longer too but the the thing that people don't realize are all the little tweaks and all the little um things you're rotoscoping and having to work with frame by frame let alone like if you're doing any type of 3d rendering on top of that um yeah it always takes longer than i expect i remember when i was first married and my wife was asking me like, how much longer do you think you're going to be spending on the video until you're done? I was like, oh, maybe like another hour. And then I ended up turning into like two and then three and then four. So I had to learn pretty early on my time management when it comes to videos for sure. Yeah. And also the scale of some projects too, because yes. I don't know if for those of you in chat that are familiar with the After Effects or Premiere or any of those video editing software, when you start, they typically give you like three tracks for video and then three tracks, tracks for audio. But when you do the stuff that Caleb does, those tracks can just exponentially grow and grow and grow. And then you have to keep track of, okay, this is for this object in the video, yeah. this is for that one, and this is the effect that transitions into this one. This There's like a thing in between that links, it gets crazy fast. <laughs> Organizing the names of your files will save you so much time in the long run. I'm really bad at it, but whenever you can, just remembering to name layers based off what they are, it will save you so much time later on. Like when you're scrolling through like 170 like video tr like layers and yeah. you're looking for, you're like, where is the, oh, okay. It's just like video seven, seven dash like seven. You're like, okay, I should probably rename that like upper body track or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, stuff like that goes a long way, saving time later on. Yeah. Cause at that point, if you click on the actual like premiere preview window, it does nothing. <laughs> right, I know right. I've, I've done that before, uh, for our April fool's videos. Uh, and when there's so many things going on, I click on, I'm like, why am I doing that? It's pointless. Cause there's so many layers and ha things happening. Like <laughs> it's just going to be messy. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I just got flashbacks to my work here at Orange. I've done, not to your level, because my stuff is more, you try to keep it simple because I have other things to take care of at Origin. But yeah. when I did the April Fool's video, there's some video magic happening there. Again, not world-class stuff, but enough to fool the audience. <laughs> Hence, April Fool's. Yeah. I, I feel like with video stuff, especially uh, just like the video magic, or people call it, um, like trying to keep the idea as straightforward as possible goes a long way with um like it being shareable and people wanting to watch it again like sometimes i have concepts that are kind of like kind of complex and a lot of stuff going on and then just being able to strip it away and try to figure out like what's what is like the one thing i'm trying to communicate with this video and if i can like narrow that down to like a, it's super easy to to make something a lot more interesting to watch effect wise and stuff like that and even better, of course, you said it yourself, like, if you can get someone to watch it again, that's even better. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. right. I know there's a couple things you watch, like, wait, how did they do that? Like, hold on, rewind, right. rewind. I want to see how they did that. Like, what, what edits or things did they do to get that to, like, to happen? I know um, I also like uh, the people over at uh, Node and Rocket Jump. We've seen mm -hmm. their stuff. Yeah, their stuff is really... Yeah. They're, the scale sometimes of their projects are just kind of mind-blowing. I'm not sure if you saw the Tiny Guns one they just did recently. Oh, I love that. Corridor is the best. Yeah. Corridor just... It's little tiny guns, but the specs are all over the top, and it's like it's it's nuts. And it, when I just... Freddie W was like, when Freddie W was starting out, that was like the whole reason why I wanted to learn After Effects. So. Oh, there you go. That's cool. Awesome. Cool stuff. Wait, hold on. Someone's asking, is the blue case a matte finish? I believe that's for specifically for me. But we got a question for you, Caleb. I'll let you take this question, and I'll look up my my answer to my question. Have you ever heard recorder? Oh, yeah, someone said, uh, have you ever heard recorder? We just talked about that. Someone said, would be cool to see a collaboration. Ooh. Oh, that would be cool. It would be that cool, would be but I feel like everyone's cool. schedules can be crazy. It's just a matter of timing, oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, they seem extremely busy all the time. And, like, they talk about their schedule 
I think in their videos once in a while and it just sounds insane. Hold on, I'm gonna get answer uh, my question. If is the blue case a matte finish? Do you know on which uh, system? Because I know that um, I believe the Chronos is the custom paint, and that's not matte; it's glossy. But for the Millennium and for the Genesis, those are matte; they're not glossy. So, hopefully, that answers that question. But yeah, uh, Cody. Over on YouTube, ask a uh, question for you, Caleb. What programs did you use to learn special effects? Oh, that's great. Okay, yeah. So I like I, I definitely use After Effects and Blender a lot. Um, but who I go to to like kind of learn, especially earlier on when I'm trying to figure out like the basics. Um, when I was starting After Effects, I was watching everything Andrew Kramer and Video Copilot was putting out. Uh, Shout out to Andrew Kramer. I've, I've used him too. <laughs> okay, he's the best. He's, his tutorials are just like on a level nobody else can touch. Um, but they like initially all the stuff I'm making just looks like a tutorial from his website verbatim. And then over time you learn how to implement the concepts you're learning into like your own ideas. Um, but anyway, Andrew Kramer, Video Copilot, um, Film Riot, uh, more that's a little less special effects heavy, more just like editing and, and film related stuff but uh those two sites are great uh blender guru when i was initially just trying to figure out how to how to work blender is great um and then just honestly going to youtube and typing in exactly what you're looking for and looking through tutorials um can go a long way just to you know if there's something in particular for what your video needs instead of trying to trying to watch this super long tutorial just watching like a five minute video on this one question you have can go along for sure. I'm going to try to hop in and yeah, YouTube is definitely a huge resource yes. that I've personally used for my projects uh, here at origin. Oh yeah. Um, and also just messing around because I find sometimes yeah. like if you're working on a project, it's, it's nice to just like time out on the project and you have this idea you want to do in your video and just like make a new project and just try to make that idea happen in this small micro project. And if it yes. works there, take those concepts you did in that one and then go back to your big project and then put it there and you'll see like, whoa, this actually worked. Yes. And then you feel so happy about yourself. Like, ah, that's like, I got this to work. So I know that's- you'll remember, me. you'll remember it that much better when you're just kind of like trial and error. You know, you're just trying to tinker with it and finally you get that effect you're trying to achieve. Or maybe you, you discover something totally different that you weren't expecting. And then you have this technique you can, you can carry on past that video. Mm-hmm. There you go. Hopefully that answers uh, that question there. Yeah, hopefully that was helpful. So this is about making videos or the building a PC. Calm down there, Luke. Our special guest is Caleb, who is a uh, maestro <laughs> at video stuff. So we're talking a lot about the video stuff and not really the PC stuff. So I apologize for that. But uh, Caleb, I know that it just became one hour. But let me know when and if you need to head out. Yes, I'll so probably just, have to be heading out here in the next five minutes or all right, so. All right, cool. So, um, chat. Okay. this is your opportunity to uh, talk about more video stuff. So, Luke, if you want to hear about more PC stuff, just wait a little bit. We'll get to the minutes, hardcore nitty-gritty. Yeah, yeah. But definitely for sure, if you guys want to talk about video stuff, uh, post it in chat. I will uh, read it out. I think, Caleb, you're reading uh, Twitch chat, I think? Yeah, yeah. So, so if you're if in you Twitch. my eyes kind of like yeah. being completely off-center, that's why. Yeah, so Twitch chat, if, by all means, uh, for those of you in the other chats, I'll just forward questions over to... Uh, to Caleb. I'm calling. This is a real question. Hey, that's what we're doing here, man. It's fine either way. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I'm just waiting for the questions to pop in because typically when you ask it and then you just wait a little bit and there you go. I'm going to get some water. A lot of talking. Diz, for a question for me, are all Origin PCs made in-house and then shipped out? Yes, they are created, or so we got all the parts here and build them here in Miami, Florida, and then we ship them out. Way cool. All-in-one or custom? So we're using an all-in-one uh, cooling solution, not a custom loop. Custom loops can be scary. <laughs> <laughs> and I think if you're professional, I know that our, because we sell professional systems or our end, as we actually don't even offer custom cooling solutions for professionals mm -hmm. just because we know that professionals just want something to work all the time. 
And the problem with custom cooling is you have to do some like your yearly maintenance or bi yearly maintenance to make sure it's running smoothly, such as like refilling the reservoir or making sure everything's good to go. So that's why you're not getting custom cooled like that extent, Caleb. We want you to keep running all the time. <laughs> so is Caleb getting RGB stuff? Because everyone knows that RGB parts make yeah. the games run faster. <laughs> Caleb is getting RGB, but are you going to be playing any games on this? I don't think so. Uh, initially, no. Possibly in the near future. Possibly. but It, it uh, can run games. This thing can run games. But yeah. the main yeah. focus is, of course, to help you make your videos. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Cody again from YouTube. Does learning Photoshop help you with special effects or they should be yes. treated differently? So I would say yes too, yeah. Oh, 100%. You... And there's some situations in which you are using Photoshop as the basis of like whatever it is effect-wise you're doing. Uh, creating clean plates is a lot easier in Photoshop than effects. Um, certain frame-by-frame -frame stuff um, can be better in Photoshop. There's a lot of other stuff you can use Photoshop for, but even just the concepts of what you're doing in Photoshop can translate very well to other Adobe products, including After Effects. Yeah, to piggyback off of that answer, there are ways to like connect your your work in Photoshop to Premiere or to After Effects or any of the other applications as well, and it's super useful. For sure. For sure. Um, actually, these name tags that we created, uh, the one underneath me and all the others, are actually I created those in Photoshop and then transferred them to After Effects to make them uh, do their little like pop out effect on screen. Right. So it definitely helps. The Photoshop, there's like, and actually Adobe has a bunch of help tools as well on their site. I've used those. I don't know if you've used those to kind of like learn how they do it. I prefer the YouTube videos personally, but uh, the right. uh, sources are there anyways. Yeah, I've used both. I, I end up finding myself on YouTube more for... For sure. <laughs> yeah, kind of funny. Da, 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 da. Oh, for the exclamation point specs does not work. I'll get that. I'll work on that. Um, after Caleb heads out, I'll be getting my new PC tomorrow. Oh, enjoy that one. Hmm. Uh, some people are saying white cable looks better. It's a matter of preference. I think that's the cool thing about the PC platform in general. I know with Macs, your customization is extremely minimal. Yeah. Um, but with PCs, you can go as crazy as you want. And oh, yeah. it's just cool for that kind of uh, aspect. And of course, I think I've always been a main proponent. Like Macs are safe to use, but PCs are more powerful and give you more <laughs> performance, which... I've always believed in that one. But then you have people like, oh, but you can get really powerful Macs, but I'm like, at like triple the cost. At triple the cost, yeah, there you go. So. The one thing I'm stressed about is with my current build, there's a lot of like, um, the wires are, so I have a, a standing desk that goes mm -hmm. sitting or standing. Um, so trying to figure out ways to keep the wires all hidden underneath the desk without them all dangling down. Um, so hopefully, I, I didn't do a great job with this current PC, so hopefully when the next one comes here, I'll have a remastered version of have you looked into wire. nets because sometimes they sell these not. nets so they sell cable nets and what the okay. cable nets do is you can just put all the cables in like a almost like together okay. and then you can hang it on the desk and when you go up and down in the desk the cables kind of go with it as well and keeps it uh organized so you can do check you have, those out i, I think like that's not what they're I, I call them cable nets but there's another thing that they're called too Okay. Um, Omar here actually okay. we, t we talked about adding a cable net to our setup here in the studio so yeah I'm gonna look into that sure yeah that's a good way to organize the cables you can use zip ties but since you do have a standing desk um, obviously you don't want to tie it too tightly because the cable are going to be moving up and down yeah so yeah I currently have like there's a bunch of different velcro setups underneath that kind of holding stuff up and then I think I have like two zip ties for one of the legs, just for a like board, just mm -hmm. to keep it out of the way. Um, FKM asks, how much storage do you spend per video? I mean, it's no problem since you have fourteen uh, terabytes. <laughs> I guess it depends on per project, right, Caleb? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every project's different. Uh, it depends what you're shooting on. Depends what uh, if it's for a client. Depends what they're looking for out of it. Um, yeah. If I'm shooting my own stuff for usually it's very minimal storage that i need for it uh, um like one video might be like five gigs or less less of space for me uh and then for a client it could be like 300 gigabytes to a terabyte of like you know raw footage mixed in with like different um different render passes for stuff and yeah so it really depends what it's for who it's for what what it was shot with. yeah mm-hmm 
Uh, Cody from YouTube asks again, Caleb, do special effects count as animation? I, I do animation as well. Not all special effects are animation, but animation can be a kind of special effects. I don't know if that's the proper answer, but... I think I get. I, I get where you're going with because it's true. There are some special effects that do use animation. There's others that don't necessarily use animation. Exactly. I mean, there's yeah. some keyframe like we use keyframes all the time. That's what right. we use in a uh, Premiere and After Effects to like make something do something, whether you want it to go up and down or do a zigzag or want it to go in a 3D space and do all sorts of things. So that's right. considered some animation. But there's a difference between like saying like drawing animation or 3D animated yeah. objects, like a walking person or something like that. Um, yeah. I feel like animation can be a vague term. Uh, oh, Zimpire, uh, someone found the thing that I was talking about, and someone just tweeted oh. it to you, so you can check out Twitter to see uh, what I was talking about. I think it's probably the cable net, I'm pretty sure. If it is, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, see, chat, chat, you're great. Chat's Come great today. Uh, I know when I've done some gameplay streams, the chat has definitely been extremely helpful sometimes. I'm like, I don't know what to do, and then they or they tell me something that I have no idea. I'm like, oh, I don't know, you could do that. Um, actually, it was in the last uh, stream we did a VR stream uh, with yeah. Boneworks, and someone said suggested to like to solve a puzzle by grabbing a trash can and putting it in to like make these two things from stopping to move. I'm like, that's a great idea. I never thought about that, and it worked. I was so happy. I was like, that's so awesome. So. Chat, you, you can be good sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> but you guys are great today. So, all right. I think, Caleb, I think everyone's uh, good with questions right now. Fantastic. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, give you your outro. So, if people want to find you and reach out to you, how can they do that? Yeah. Um, so, through Instagram, uh, like through the DMs, that's totally fine. Um, I have my email attached to my Instagram, I believe, and my Twitter account. Um, so if it's like different business proposals or whatever through that is totally fine as well. Um, but I usually respond fastest via my email associated with my Instagram account or my Instagram for sure. And of course they can find your work on TikTok and Instagram, correct? Yeah. TikTok is not definitely not a place for like messaging so i never like yeah Instagram but to see your work sure. like if they just want to keep up with your work oh, and like yeah. see your video clips oh, and projects yeah, I, it depends what the video is i'll be posting it first on tiktok or instagram um but both those two for sure for all my portfolio related stuff all right uh caleb cool, thank you so much for jo uh, joining us on the live build i hope you enjoyed uh watching the pc build and just having this quick oh, little yeah. brief conversation and interacting with the chat i know that uh, a lot of good questions today from chat so thank you chat um and thank you caleb for joining us well uh, yeah thank you for having me and it's been really fun watching this build happen i could never do that <laughs> <laughs> well that's you know we, we are here to offer that to the people um so we will uh so the plan is basically we finish the build uh we integrate it we make sure everything is good to go and if there is a something wrong we take care of it before we ship it out to you um Perfect. but uh i know our team will be in sync with you to uh do the next steps and hopefully get the pc out to you so you can continue working on your stuff on your new pc fantastic and earlier on you said reach out to the team about m.2 m.2 nvme drive i know I've personally always recommend, I've said this before on live builds, I'm like, if some, the chat usually chat calls it out too, and I say the same thing too to go right. with an NVMe OS drive just because it's just a little bit faster, but it's it's nice okay. to have. Fantastic. So, well, appreciate it. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Kale. Enjoy the thank rest you. of your day and uh, have enjoy your time with your family. See you. Thank you. Bye. All right. That was Caleb Natale. All right, so thank you, Caleb. And now it's just you and me, chat, and Omar. Hi, Omar. Oh, God, he's so big. Uh, so <laughs> don't, no, no, no. That's like Attack on Titan. Leave me alone. All right, so let me uh, get out of there, get that up. I want to jump back to uh, some of Caleb's videos because I don't spend too much time here. But I'm going to try to so see if I can find my favorite. I like this one. So I'm going to jump over here and show you guys one of my favorites. It was just a brand new one. So we'll jump and take a look at it. Oh. 
What happened? What happened to the audio? No, it just, it's buffering. Why is it buffering? There you go. All right, that's it. That's pretty good one. All right, so again, you guys can find Caleb's work on TikTok and Instagram. Very cool stuff. I'm excited that you know, we're sending out a PC to someone who works and makes all this cool stuff on the interwebs. Follow character selection. All right, we're back at it. So Omar, just to catch you guys up, now we're going to talk about PC stuff going on here. He's already added the CPU cooler from what it looks like. The power supply has been added down there. The cables are all being wired. So I think we're in the wiring part, right? Yes, yes, we are. So this is the second half of the build then where Omar just takes care of the wiring. So this is uh, your time chat to interact with me and Omar, if you have any questions for us and we'll do our best to answer them for you. How's this headset, Razer Hammerhead? Um, I'm not too familiar with it. I don't even think I've heard of the Hammerhead, so I don't know. Um, we'll take a look at the specs very briefly before we get back into the build. So these are the specs. I'm not going to read all of them, but I'll just highlight the key specs. Uh, it's a 1,000 watt power supply from Corsair. The CPU is an Intel Core i9-7980XE, and the GPU is an 11 gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, uh, 64 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz RAM, and then 16 terabytes of storage, two of them being an uh, SSD, and then 14 a hard disk a drive. Again, this is designed not to be a gaming build, but a professional build. So someone can, you know, someone like Caleb can make videos and take care of rendering and do all that sorts of fun stuff with this PC. So 64 gigs RAM is an overkill. I mean, I, I don't think it's overkill in this situation. Because um, again, Caleb works very heavily with special effects. So he needs that RAM, especially if he's working with a ton of footage and uh, content. So... If it's for gaming, that is absolutely overkill. You don't need 64 gigabytes. I mean, 32 gigabytes can be overkill in some situations for gaming. But if you're, you're gaming, 16 is the safest number today. Eight might be pushing it. But 16 is the safest uh, amount of RAM to get today. Oh, do, 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 do. All right. Someone said we're flex. Omar, cough twice if they think if they're holding you hostage. <laughs> oh man. How much? All right, I'm gonna actually try to spec out the build for you guys. Again, we don't offer the parts featured on the specs list aren't the same as what we offer in the site because on our site, the configurator, we update the hardware as a uh, new hardware comes in and new hardware goes out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to attempt to spec out a build like this one. What is this PC for? This is for Caleb Natalie, an incredible visual effects, special effects uh, person. You might have seen his work across the interwebs. Very cool stuff, honestly. The stuff, like if you go on his uh, channels, it's very cool like visual or video magic as he says too. And we work on this uh, specking out the build. So I'm gonna put this as a millennium. But I use Blender too. Yeah, Blender. Eh? If you're mastery, I vote since we're in this movie room. All right, let's see here. Intel. Yeah, so that's where it gets really weird because we don't offer these um, i9 7980XE, but we do offer the i9 10980XE, which is another 18 core CPU, but with more. Um, which we call it speed. So it's kind of like a cousin almost, but we'll pick that one just for the sake of uh, consistency. So this build that I'm specking out currently is going to be a uh, more motherboard, the MSI X39 Pro memory. We got 64 of 3000 megahertz cooling. That's a 360 uh, millimeters, right, Omar? Yeah. Yeah. And the it's the Corsair one, right? Yeah. Uh, case fans, we do have RGB. We have a 2080 Ti. OS drive, we went with a two terabyte. 
unfortunately we don't have that specific drive, so this will be the close second. And then storage drive, we got a 14 terabyte. Unfortunately, we only have 10. So if my, I was close. So again, again, we these are not exactly the same specs. That said, based on the stuff that we have on our site, if you wanted to build a similar PC build like this one, it would come out to $5,106. Let me jump over here to our site. So you can <laughs> All right, so again, I made some compromises here, as I mentioned. Um, let's actually get the exterior to be the same. Bloop. Uh, so this is pretty much a similar design. So the Millennium with the red internal and uh, silver external. Uh, we're using standard orientation. Again, this CP, so again, we're using the uh, 7980 XE, but we don't offer that on our site, so we're just gonna go with the 10. I know this is probably a little bit more expensive than the 79. Motherboard is actually the same. It's the MSI X299. Memory, um, we don't have RGB memory in that much. I mean, we could go with a Dominator, but just for the sake of consistency of the speed, we're gonna go with this one, the 3000 megahertz. Uh, cooling, we'll go with that one. We're not using liquid cooling. The case fans, we've added the Corsair LL fans, which is uh, what Caleb's build features. GPU 2080 Ti, only one. Uh, hard drive cables are already included. Operating system drive, we went over here for our sample, the Samsung, but the build currently uses the Western Digital SSD. And then of course the 10 terabytes of uh, storage. Not 14, if it was 14, this would probably be a little bit more. So again, some compromises here, but this is the closest, uh, and then of course the 1000 watt power supply. This is the closest, uh, that we can get to using our current configurator. So there it is. Now you know. I was close, I said 4,000, 5,000, I wasn't too far off, but again, if it was exactly the parts, it'd probably be, I think, less, actually. It's a little bit less, probably 4,500. Again, that's my guess. I could be totally wrong, but that's my guess. When will 3,600 speed ramp show up? Bruh, there's already like crazy speeds out there. Uh, you can find them. I think the question is if can the processor support it, which they should, but they're out there. It is a beefy PC. Again, this is not designed for gaming. Um, I, I need to say that over and over and over. I know a lot of you come here from gaming background, gaming backgrounds and probably think like, whoa, like this is a crazy build, but you don't need this much power for gaming. So 128 RAM, please. Okay, thanks. We do offer that, actually, uh, no, no lie, on our professional side. Uh, if you take a look at workstation desktops, we offer even more options on that front. Especially on the RAM and uh, CPU side. And the graphics side. We offer Quadro on that side. Do, do, do. I know everyone's talking about the SATA SSD. I should have mentioned, I was meaning to mention it earlier to the team, the team that put up together the specs, because I'm like, they're gonna call us out on it. And I was not wrong, so. Hey, good PC at minimum will cost $700. That sounds about right. <laughs> if it's not for gaming, what's it be for? It's, so it's mainly for uh, After Effects. So Adobe After Effects, if you're familiar with that program, and uh, Premiere, and the video editing, and mostly special effects working, so working with a lot of uh, objects and um, like things moving around, visual effects at home. So edits, kind of sort of edits, but it's not. It's really more about the special effects, to be honest. Because video editing is one thing, but when you work with special effects, that takes it to a whole nother level. Because one thing with video editing is just more of your like cutting the clips together and making sure the audio is good. Special effects are more of like what's happening on screen. Like if I decided to add a, let me see here. I don't know why I'm going to do this, but uh, this is a horrible thing. Uh, let's see if I can get this. Uh, here we go. Is this what I wanted? But it, no, it needs to be a, uh, animated. I'm trying to find a animated. Uh, do, 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 type animated. There it is. 
if I wanted to add, and it has to be transparent. Oh my gosh, I can't find it. Ah, whatever. I'm not going to do it. Gotcha, this crazy computer editing special. Yeah, there you go. More processing to cal calculations, that is correct. Especially if it's objects created specifically. Like, it's one thing to import stuff. It's another thing to actually create um, things in general. Like, let me see if I can try to find an example of something. Yeah, this is a good one. I'm going to jump back to our Caleb's uh, TikTok to show you guys. All right, so we're going to take a look at this one. Mahomes now on first down. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. Oh, no, he lost the football. What? So the football is a um, special effects, and then the players are, I believe, they use a green. He did like an extreme green screen or clipping effect to get them to pop up and make it appear as if they were coming at him. I'm trying to find another one. Oh, this Ori one's also a good one. So brace yourselves, hashtag ad. But this is a really good one that Caleb did for uh, Oreo. <laughs> That's a little loud. There we go. So, uh, sponsor stream. <laughs> so, that Oreo one, you can tell there's a ton of stuff happening there. Actually, if you look very closely, you can see, like, he had to, like, model the, the Oreo itself and do a lot of tweaking with the shadows to make sure that it looks realistic or at least realistic enough that it appears real and it doesn't seem fake that's really the trick with special effects is um what am i call it to get it to look real enough honestly in movies you see that in movies all the time too um actually this weekend uh call the wild has the dog which is probably <laughs> a special effects uh brouhaha in itself trying to get that dog to look realistic but also have some animation with them as well even new sonic uh they, they honestly i'm not sure if you guys have seen the new sonic movie but they pulled a miracle with that one to go from the intended design of the original sonic to the new one and the way it came out in the final product oh man um the movie i thought was pretty good uh, i enjoyed it but definitely for sure that was a special effects uh accomplishment for them and that team so uh, Zenic, I'm considering upgrading my CPU motherboard and RAM. Do you think it would be worth waiting for the new Intel CPUs? Well, I can safely tell you that every year there's always probably going to be something new coming out, whether it's Intel, AMD, but whether what will be, I have no idea, but it's a safe assumption to make. Uh, whether it's worth waiting, that's always been an eternal question. I've been working here for <laughs> close to three and a half years, and that's always been like one of the questions, like, do you think I should wait? Do you think I should wait? Um... If you really, so when you buy something when it comes out, you're kind of jumping in without having anyone else tested the hardware unless you like watch a review and immediately buy it after that. Um, so you'll be a um, first adopter basically of the new hardware uh, for better, for worse, uh, for better if it's more performance over previous generation hardware and it lasts longer for you. Um, for worse, if there's something wrong with it. But for the most part, Intel and D processors have been pretty good for the past couple of years. Uh, so if you really want that extra performance and you're willing to pay, that's a big, 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 big uh, thing is that you're willing to pay. There's one thing to say like, oh, is it willing to, if, you're, if I want to wait, that means are you willing to pay that higher price point? Because remember, the new stuff is always going to be higher price than the last gen stuff. If you don't care, if you care about price... Do you want to be aiming for the last gen stuff the second the new stuff comes out because the prices are going to go down because they want to get rid of the old stuff. So hopefully that answers that question if it's worth waiting. It depends on if you're willing to pay. That is the answer to that. Uh, well, what's a good video editing tool for beginners as in edit no special effects? There are a couple of them out there. Uh, I don't like to recommend Adobe Premiere to people primarily because you do have to pay for it. Um, for the most part, especially if you want to get the updated versions or updates for it. Um, but there, if you look online, there should be some good alternatives to Adobe Premiere. Does anyone know about anything about the giveaway they teased on Instagram? Yes, wait. Yes, I do. And uh, they did a follow-up, and all I can say is that keep an eye out for tomorrow. 
Da, da, da. Baby Sonic was cute. <laughs> How would you say a 1660 Ti with a Ryzen 5 2600 would perform together for decent frames of Fortnite CSGO 200 plus? Hmm. The CPU is fine. The thing is, for the frames, what resolution are you playing on? Because the depending on the resolution and the effects, or not the effects, I keep saying effects, uh, the settings, you may be able to reach 200. I think with CSGO, for sure, Fortnite is going to be the tricky one. Because Fortnite's more demanding than CSGO. That's a fact. <laughs> I sound a little low on sound. Oh, I know why. I lowered my sound. I apologize. The reason because the, the TikTok videos are really loud. So, sorry about that. Thank you for sh or shouting that out. I would hope that Intel comes something big within the next year or to respond to AMD, but they've been asleep for the last decade, so who knows? Who knows? I don't know. If, I mean, honestly, Intel's been doing... I, the performance for games has been pretty solid, but AMD's doing great, man. AMD's doing great. Uh, Capital One, what's in your wallet? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm budgeting my Origin PC. How are the 2080 Super Founders Editions cards? My others are out of my range. I haven't worked with the 2080 Super, but it seems to be pretty solid for what it's worth. Um, the From what everyone has said, this is citing other people. People think the 2070 Super is the best price performance GPU available right now. Um, and the thing is the 2080 Super is better for people that want to attempt... Uh, 144p, maybe 144 hertz in that range. Um, the 2080 Super is a weird card, if you ask me, because it's like it's in between the 2070 Super and the 2080 Ti, and the difference between two those two is so large, it's kind of smack in the middle. Because the 2080 Ti is good for 4K at least, but the 2070 Super is really, really good for 1440p. So that leaves the 2080 Super in kind of like an odd place. So. Should I go to 720p? No. I mean, unless, uh, I mean, if you really want to, you could might have to do that. But personally, I prefer 1080p as like the standard and try to avoid going down because the higher resolution will help in some case. But definitely a higher frame rate helps as well. If anything, I would try to keep an eye out uh, Nyquil for uh, 2060s because uh, the prices of those have actually been dropping uh, because there's more competition on that front between uh, AMD and NVIDIA. So if you want to keep an eye out for 2060s, if you do want um, a powerful uh, GPU. Because I, I, I read an article on PC Gamer saying that they're down below 300 now. So the 1660 Ti comes in around 200-ish. So if you're willing to spend a little extra money, that will definitely, I can tell you, the more money you spend on the GPU, the better frame performance you're going to get, for sure. So... Um. My PC specs are, oh, you, you, you hit me with all the specs there, but let me see the key ones. RTX 2070 Super, cool, Intel Core i7-9700. That's a solid build uh, there, Evan, Evan, Evan the Husky, solid. Three Kingdoms, how are you being? I'm being great. I see here, Three Kingdoms. I think there's a 2070 Super on the website. There should be. I know, uh, let me take a look. I'm pretty sure we do offer the 2070 Super. Yeah, it's there. It's a couple down. Wish I get an origin PC chassis without all the parts. Every so often, every blue moon, I say blue moon like every so couple of years, sometimes we do sell our cases, but that is a rare occurrence. So, Jet Chet Off says there are 20, 2060KOs from EVGA that have the 2080 chip. I know that's kind of weird. I, I read that too, and I thought it was really odd, but. Hey, that, I feel that's a gamble, though, if you want to try. Super Founders Edition. Yeah, that's what we only, uh, the Founders Edition. That's the only one we offer for that. Just go for 1080p. It'll just make it a little smoother, you know, better safe than And honestly, 200 frames per second, I feel it's useful. And you need to have a monitor. This is the key part. You need to have a monitor that supports it. Because one thing to get like the super powered computer, but then not have a monitor, like if you're playing on a 1080p monitor that's 75 hertz, that you're not going to get the benefit of the 200 uh, 
hertz unless you have the monitor. So if you're accounting for your build, make sure you account also for the monitor. So if you have a really good monitor, then ignore what I just said. But if you don't, uh, keep that in mind. You need a good monitor enough to get the frames. Personally, I would aim for 144 hertz. So what car should I buy? Actually, speaking of that, uh, Pills over in a Twitch. What car should I buy for 104 FPS 1080p gaming on high settings? I have Verizon. Your CPU is great. Your GPU could definitely boost it up. Um, I'm thinking either the AMD 5700 XT or the 2070 RTX. If you want to go for super, by all means go for super, but the 2070 should be able to handle that. But check the games. Make sure you, like, don't take my word for it. Make sure you check the benchmarks and uh, check the games, specifically the games that you play the most, uh, to make sure that they uh, meet your requirements. Because the problem is, like, you need to make sure, like, the, it works for the games that you play. You can kind of prepare for the games for the future. Like, I know Cyberpunk is a game that plenty of people are currently specking out to make sure that they're ready for it. Um, and if The Witcher was any indication, you will need some performance for uh, Cyberpunk. So, actually, speaking of Cyberpunk, did anyone see that a uh, 2080 Ti Cyberpunk edition? Looks really cool. Looks really cool. That's all I gotta say. I know that Nvidia is running giveaways for that, so if you're interested to check out that Cyberpunk GPU, uh, go to Nvidia GeForce's Twitter and uh, learn how to enter for that one. Hey, we can call our buddies over Nvidia and be like, hey, Nvidia. How about that uh, Cyberpunk GPU, huh? <laughs> That's an idea. We we did do those Cyberpunk builds. Uh, we did the one for Linus. That one's pretty cool. And then we did the one for the giveaway. That was pretty cool, too. <laughs> PJ is actually the ones that, that uh, he, he's the one that built the two Cyberpunk builds. And when he saw that GPU, he was like, oh, no, do I have to build another Cyberpunk PC <laughs> with this GPU inside it? So... Tizzle, so you're saying my 60 hertz 720 monitor isn't decent enough for a decent computer? That is extremely low. Um, unfortunately, Tizzle, uh, your PC might be better than your monitor. If you look up on the subreddits, you'll find that the monitor is a pretty important part of your PC build, um, especially nowadays, because your PC can churn out more frames. So there's nowadays a couple years ago this wasn't the case but nowadays 104 144 hertz is actually attainable in plenty of games so fortnite apex csgo overwatch uh dota league of legends like the really popular esports kind of games 144 hertz is attainable for depending on like if you get like an i7 ryzen 7 or i5 even i5 or ryzen 5 with a 2060 and up you just have to tweak the settings, but it is attainable. Compared to previous generations where you need a little bit more, but now it's more attainable than normal. So the monitor is important. Dun, 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 dun. Dual 1060. That's an interesting setup there. All yellow Cyberpunk build would be awesome. Power tool on PC? Don't worry, it's a low torque, and Omar's an expert with it. He won't break the motherboard. It is not right, so that is true. We do not recommend using power tools on your own personal builds unless you have experience with it. Um, we here at Origin PC, we do use power tools. Oh, look at that mess, Omar. Don't do that to us. You gotta clean it up. Clean it up. Da, 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 da. I got an i7 6700K with its GTX 1070 Super, and I get 400 for events CS going. Yeah, 1,000, 1K FPS in Minecraft. Minecraft is not the most demanding game, but it will be when RTX comes out. I know it's the, the Redstone version, but I can't wait to do that stream. I honestly cannot wait. I'm excited to stream Minecraft with RTX on. You heard it here first. I actually am. It's going to be a fun stream. So, Freakazoid, I need a new build. I got an i7-4970K, uh, 24 gigab wait, 24 gigabytes of RAM, that's an odd kit, and 1060, or 1070 FTW to 8K, I had it for a while. Your CPU is still good. Um, I mean, I think you have at least one to two years left on your CPU. 
your GPU, it's all your GPU is also solid too. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to aim for, because I mean, when you say what should I upgrade to, is like, do you how far do you want to go? Because honestly, that's a solid build for today, in my personal opinion. Um, if you give me an idea of like what you would like or what you're aiming for, it could probably give you an idea of what to look for, like specifically like what game you want to play, what resolution you want to play on, what frame rate and refresh rate do you need? So frame rate slash refresh i know th they're not the same but you know what i mean i'm guilty of getting a 2070 for minecraft rtx see see i'm gonna get an rtx 3000 when it comes out yeah there's a lot of people doing that too they're waiting there's people waiting <laughs> i think you need 14 rtx 20 ati cards and 140 terabyte for minecraft not really I'm curious to, to what exactly you do you need though, because the videos that they showed with Minecraft RTX look excellent, but I'm curious as to what's required to get that. So I know our gaming PC that we have here in the office, that one, you can't see it, but I'm pointing at it, is a i9-9900KF with a 2080Ti. So it can handle pretty much any game, like no problem. So. Can I have it? No. It's ours. That's how we do our gameplay streams. <laughs> I built my PC for the VR headset. Ooh. VR. I'm all about that VR hat. We have the vibe right up there. <laughs> Everything you guys are talking about. Actually, you could see it in the shot right there. Omer, point at it. Uh, uh, there, there's the vibe. <laughs> kind of peeking over there. There it is. Hey, vibe. Right there. Because we had a, if you guys, um, some of you might have been here, remind or not, but uh, you can't see this build. It's pre -record. It's not pre-recorded. I just read your comment. Um, Boneworks was the last game we streamed, and that was a ton of fun. Uh, shout out to Omar for manning the command center over here, doing a good job at fielding the questions and uh, make sure everything ran smoothly on this front while I was in the zone like this. I had that thing strapped to my head for two hours. That's insane. So. Hold on, let's see here. I want to move in, or I want to move a new socket and also more cores. I play lots of MMO games like Wild and Final Fantasy, and also shooter games like Call and Battlefield. I want to run them in ultra and sending them out without lagging. Hmm. Do you know what resolution and refresh rate you need, Freakazoid? Because it gives me an idea, but if you give me a, a resolution and refresh rate, I can recommend uh, something. Ah, da 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 da. Damn, fakey. I'm sorry to hear that. Most likely not do VR beginning to old and eyes are going quickly. I feel like VR is getting better over time, though. Uh, Oculus and um, what should I call it? Valve are, I think, in the forefront on that. The Windows Mixed Reality headsets are also pretty good. Um, I have one at home. I have the Odyssey Plus. I got it for like 230 and it works great. I love it for Pavlov, for Boneworks, and I can't wait for Half-Life. What if the pre-recording pre-recorded that message? I would be impressed. Wait, you're the same streamer that was doing the messages game. Can't remember. Uh, kind words. Yes, that was me. I did that stream. Um, broke Father Computer supporting a AMD FX 6120. How far am I behind Power Curve? That's a solid uh, CPU still. I think the problem is that some games might have problems with it. I know PUBG currently... I have a friend of mine has a similar CPU like yours, uh, Richard, and he's having problems in PUBG, but every other game is running fine. But it's getting close to that point. You're not too far behind, but I would say definitely in a year or two, or especially when the new gen consoles come out and the games get more demanding, that's when you might start to notice a drop in performance. Um, but for now, I think it still works fine. I think definitely for sure when the new games come out uh, at the end of the year, that run of the new consoles will most likely be on PC as well. The PC is definitely going to push them to the most, or to like the best possible uh, setup. Like that Godfall. Godfall's coming out on PlayStation Five and PC. Ha <laughs> ha. So, and we got the Avengers game coming out. That should be definitely a performance uh, thing. Cyberpunk, of course, in September. Um, the new Call of Duty, whatever that is. So. 
Do, do, do. I could build it better. I won't stop you, Mick. <laughs> By all means, if you want to build it better, I won't stop you. We won't stop you. You can do it. Well, an M.2 drive lasts longer than a regular SSD. They're about the same. Honestly, what determines the life of an SSD is the amount of times you do reading and writing. If the more reading and writing you do, the shorter the SSD lasts. It's preferred to use SSDs for, um, you know, the OS. That's the big option for sure. And if you want to store like video files and stuff, it's good to put them on like a regular hard drive. But if you want to, like, for, for, I'm guilty of having a, a PC build with only an NVMe drive or M.2 NVMe drive only. There's no SATA connections on my PC. That's it, just on the motherboard. So, future. Pre built suck. Dang. Do you think AMD will overtake NVIDIA GPUs? I don't know. I mean, NVIDIA's kind of... I feel like the 10 series was such a massive leap in terms of performance. Like, honestly, that generation was insane. That jump from um, the, nine, the the 900 to the 10 was such a massive jump in performance that people today still continue to use the 10 series GPUs. That's how good they are. So, but we'll see. I mean, AMD, I feel like they're they're working their way up. Because they're uh, fifty thousand or the five thousand seven hundred XC is a very solid card, from my understanding. I know that there's some, there's some, people have different issues with it, but I still think it's pretty solid in terms of performance. Do do do. Ten eighty p resolution and currently don't own a gaming monitor. Currently on the three inch. Okay. So you want to play ten eighty p with high FPS? I would definitely. Hmm. And you want to play MMOs and shooters like Battlefield and COD? I would go with, if we're going 1080p, between an uh, i7, a Ryzen 7, with a 2070 Super, or if you're willing to spend more, the 2080 Super. You don't need a 2080 Ti. Actually, probably, actually, because you're playing at 1080p and you want to go Ultra, I think the 2070 Super is probably the safest one. But if you do get, I would, the monitor is a kind of side upgrade. I would probably prepare for a 1440p resolution and a higher refresh rate, so maybe between 2070 and 2080 supers. Freakazoid. CPUs, I think the the five sevens should be fine, especially if it's only for gaming. If you're doing more than gaming, though, if you like to uh, do multi-monitor things with your setup, I'd definitely go with a higher processor. But that would be my recommendation for that. So if you want to spec something out really quick here and post the specs and let me know, just I'll be more than happy to give some insight and i'm sure the chat would be more than happy to to do we broke youtube youtube what'd you guys do you kill it oh did youtube break don't lose me as well oh man youtube what happened let me take a look <laughs> everyone over in youtube's like freaking out oh man royale with cheese got my pc from you guys in 2008 it's a beast and it looks great awesome work guys thank you royale with cheese i'll pass it on to the team what happened youtube youtube Oh man, did it end? Oh man, that's a bummer. No. That's a bummer. Yeah, it looks like YouTube's bugging out right now because I can't even get it up. <laughs> That's a bummer. Sorry, YouTube friends. Our YouTube friends are unfortunately suffering from an outage there. But everywhere else seems to be fine, right? Twitch? Mixer? YouTube? YouTube. That's what I always go with YouTube for the throne. Uh, Facebook? Twitter? So, sorry guys over on YouTube. Yeah, it looks like YouTube's... That's a bummer. I saw that i5-7600K, 2080 Ti. Oh, man. Uh, one motherboard and CPU should I get with your taxes? Uh, I mean, I still think that's a solid build for Three Kingdoms. I know you got that 20 guy. It's great. Um, I mean, I feel like if you wait a little bit to the half year mark and see if by the half year we don't get new stuff from Intel or AMD, 
uh, I don't know. I just feel like this is a good year to wait for new stuff. So, what's this case? Actually, where can I find the PC settings? I got you, uh, Senderlay. Give me a quick second here. Here you are. These are the specs of the PC build that Omar is building currently. Uh, highlights being the 1,000-watt uh, power supply from Corsair, X39 motherboard from MSI, Intel Core i9-7980XE CPU, and a single 11GB NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, and 64 gigabytes of RAM, and 14 terabytes of storage. Oof. Uh, that's a beefy. Sorry, Mom. I think I ruined a company on YouTube. No worries. It's not your fault, but whatever. Okay. Let's see here. I mean... Three Kingdoms, I think, maybe. I mean, I don't know what your budget is for the upgrade. Possibly looking to the 9700K or the 9900K, depending on your budget, and then the appropriate motherboard. There's so many motherboard options, you, can, you can't go wrong with them. It's like, I'd probably spend up more than 150 on a motherboard. Um, But maybe, again, like I said, possibly wait for new hardware this year. Do you think there'll be another jump from the 20 series to the 3... Uh, 3000 series or whatever NVIDIA calls the next generation. Um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, that's all in NVIDIA's team on how much they want to make a jump to. I think what would be the most telling is how much of a, or how much, like the lower end 3000 series cards, 3000 series cards should be able to handle RTX significantly better than the current 20 series for sure. So you'll see more games supporting RTX uh, features. So we'll see in that from. But in terms of actual graphical performance, I have no idea. It's kind of like a long shot. I know, I'm know i not sure if you guys have seen them online, but sometimes people make charts of like the performance jumps. And you'll see that like the jump from the 900 to the 10 is like the, the biggest one that NVIDIA ever did. So how much better does a 2080 Ti have a 10, if I have a 1080 Ti? Is it worth it to upgrade a 2080 Ti or can I wait till the next cards? I mean, honestly, if you want to go for 4K gameplay the 2080 Ti is where it's at however if you do not care about 4k gameplay the 1080 Ti is still one of the best cards on the market uh, i have an i9 9900k 16 gigabytes of ram rtx 2070 super what can i change you got a solid build there man i mean i don't i don't know <laughs> i mean if you want to spend money spend money i don't know what to tell you get a 2080 Ti <laughs> and sell the super and maybe boost your RAM to 32 gigs. Right now, RAM prices are cheap. So if you're interested in RAM, definitely check that out. I can't wait. I'm getting a 9999KS delidded with an Asus. Ooh, that's a lot of a CPU performance there. Nice. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to go now, YouTube dev. Yeah, sorry, guys. Over in YouTube. Man, what a bummer. Answered Atomic's question. I'm hoping to grab the GTX 10 or 1650 four gigabyte low profile card. I heard you say the manufacturers have a mid year release. Should I wait till then or Black Friday? Hmm. If you're going for a card that low, I would definitely be curious to see what the next generation low end cards would be. But I don't know if they, if for example, if if Nvidia releases hypothetically, I'm uh, this again. This is all hypothetical. If Nvidia releases the new generation cards this year, you wouldn't see the low end cards until next year. Because NVIDIA typically, the way they launch their GPUs is they launch with the top line cards first and then work their way down the list. So they would theoretically launch, like what they did with the 20 series, they launched with the 20 Ti, the 2080, and the 2070. And then the 2060 eventually came out, and the GTX 16 and down came out after that. So if you're waiting for a budget GPU, um, unfortunately, you'd have to wait or go ahead and grab that 1650 if you can get a good price on it um because i don't think they're going to refresh or do anything with those cards i think the major refresh is definitely going to be, be the jump from the 20 to the next generation with at 3000 as everyone is speculating here today so um <laughs> just set myself up a budget bill 3600 32 RAM SSD using my old 960. Is 16 Super... Oh, 16 Super is... Uh, 1660 Super is solid for 1080p. But the 960, if you're still running it fine, if you're finding the games are fine for the 960, I'd say stick around with that as long as you can and maybe see uh, what the low end... But the thing is, 16 Super... Or 1660 Super is a solid card for 1080p. 
What do you think of the dark base pro cases? I want to get one, not be the Oh, I'm curious. I want to see what those look like. I love seeing other cases. I know uh, if you guys have been to QuakeCon or you know about QuakeCon, you see so many different cases there. It's awesome. And especially the custom cases. Oh, I haven't seen these. Oh, this is a Be Quiet. Um, let's take a look. Honestly, there's a ton of great case makers on there. We actually even offer we offer the Corsair cases and other different cases on our Kronos and Neuron. We offer, I believe, Fractal and Corsair on our gaming PCs. Let's see this one. Oh, this one has orange, but I guess you can make it black. Let's see. That's an interesting design, to be honest. And it has those slots there. So I'm impressed. I mean, it looks pretty good. The thing is, you can't go wrong with these guys. But I haven't really seen Be Quiet's cases, to be honest. So, oh, it has a fan controller too. That's interesting. But they, I guess they want you to be in their ecosystem. So, that's the the compromise there. I would say look up reviews too. I mean, the way I'm basing this on is just looking at their webpage. But if you really want a more in depth, I'd probably say to look at YouTube videos or people that cover the case to see uh, what they like and what they don't like about it. So. I guess for me, what I don't like about it, based on the visual design, is that the the glass panel is like kind of like a part. So there's like a a margin on the on the glass part. Like it's not full. It's not it's not flush with the case. It's kind of like you take it in and out, kind of sort of. Omar's adding the fan con or not the fan the RGB controller uh, to the power, so that way you can control the RGB lighting of the case via the controller. I have a <laughs> Rookspin, get out of here. <laughs> Rookspin's like, I have an i9 9900K20 Ti and 64 gigabytes of RAM. What can I change? My pants. <laughs> I'm actually getting a 4K screen, so you just answer my question. I'll be saying for a 28 Ti next. Yeah, there you go. If you do really do want to go for 4K gaming, 28 Ti is pretty much a solid option. If you go with the 28 Super, you're making compromises and you're going to have to lower the settings to higher medium. Honestly, again, Atomic, your build's very solid. If you're spending money to spend money, go with the 20 ATI. I asked this on Facebook. No response to this. I know you guys focus on high performance, but any chance you want me to get in a sub 1K build market for those who can't even... Unfortunately, I know I can probably... I, I can't answer that one. I don't think we will. Our focus is definitely on the higher end stuff. And again, you also have to remember, it's not just the PC you're getting. You're also getting the support. You're getting the crate. You're getting the whole thing there. So if something happens to your PC with us, we'll, you'll always have a 24-7 team on standby to help you out. So, And if there is a part or something that's wrong, uh, you can ship it back to us and then take care of it. But again, it depends on your warranty plan and whatnot. But you got, you got to make sure you pay attention to the warranty plan and the shipping stuff. Because if you're out of warranty and you're, you no longer have shipping, you do have to pay for the shipping. But we take care of everything um, for that. So... Uh, do, 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 do. Six, eighth, or ninth gen Intel, which think best? If you're buying a new CPU today, I always recommend to go with the latest and greatest CPUs. So it's better to go with, say, like the ninth gen or, or the ninth gen Intel or Ryzen third gen. Um, just because it will last you longer. You will save money if you go with the before or the older generations. However, that CPU won't la last you as long as the others, and I think it's worth it to spend that extra 100 or 200 to get something that lasts longer. So that's my thought on that one. YouTube broke. Yes, it did. I'm sorry, guys. My rig last year... Is last generation top notch i7 8700k 1080 dude you're just yeah yeah Sandra Lee, that's solid that I think you built it pretty much exactly to last that length the 1080 Ti honestly is still when that came out all of us here were like it's a good card <laughs> it was it was such a jump to go from say like the 980 to 1080 Ti I was just like wow so. Uh, should people buy the new three uh, series cards immediately or wait for the second production match to, to buy them? 
Uh, I, I think I answered this earlier, but I always said if you do get a card or some hardware um, before or like when it launches immediately, you're putting yourself at risk as a first adopter because first adopters are the ones that get all the bumps. So if something is wrong, you guys are going to be the first to know, unfortunately. I know with the 20 series, um, some people were reporting some issues. Others are perfectly fine. So it was kind of like widespread, just like good or bad or whatever. But that means you were the first. So, again, for better or for worse, you can either get that huge performance boost and be like, yeah, I'm getting like crazy FPS in my games. On the other hand, you might be like, oh, no, something's wrong with my thing and I have to, you know, do a RMA on my card. So, it's a matter of preference. I think for me, I would definitely be leaning more to the waiting until like a while option. Um, especially if there are some reports, maybe like a, during the first month that the cards are available. So. Yeah, that's the way I'd probably approach it. I see there's 2080 Super on the site, but as a blower fan, what's the advantage or disadvantage of that? So blowers are typically better for smaller cases where there's not too much air inside because it blows the air out. However, the open air ones are better for larger cases. That's why we offer the blowers on the Neuron and the Kronos. I think, do we offer it in the Millennium? I personally don't recommend it for the Millennium. Yeah, I think we do. I don't recommend, I would personally recommend the open air ones because... I think they're better, especially depending on the case size. Blower is better for smaller. So, for example, if you went with two blower cards on a neuron, that makes more sense because there's not too much airflow there, but that way the blower, it can just blow the air out. So, um, <laughs> Hopefully that answers that. What's the ETA tell power on? I think we're getting a little close. Omar's just uh, wrapping up the wires here. So I probably estimate maybe 10 to 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> trying to catch up to the questions. Can you add RGB lighting to existing lighting? I have an or origin already. I would like to change up the look in it. So if you do have our cases, um, that depends. I don't I don't know what case model you have, Josh, but if you call up our support team, you can talk to them to see what your options are for RGB lighting and if you want to change stuff up. I know that the fans are an option if you do want to change the fans, but that means you'd have to get the Corsair controller because over here, we pretty much exclusively, for in terms of RGB fans, we pretty much exclusively sell Corsair RGB fans, obviously. Um, but in terms of the RGB strips and the controllers and stuff, uh, I would definitely call support to see if there's anything they, they can do on there. And if they can't, then that might be the case. But I think they, sh they should be able to do something, especially if you have the older cases, but we'll see. Um, it's such a rad costume streaming the bills. We've been doing this for a while, actually. Um, bum. We, our first live build, I believe, was in 2015 or 2016. And since then, we've been doing them since then. So it's been a fun thing. I think it's cool to see Omar have at it. I tried to commentate over it, but today we had uh, Caleb as a guest. So uh, I spent a lot of time talking to Caleb about uh, special effects and editing and all that fun stuff and his work. Uh, not too much on the actual PC part. Because like, when I just jumped in to talk about the stream omar was just pretty much had to do cable management which it's really not too much to talk about cable management besides just like measuring the distance of the cables and that's how i did it on my own build like you have to measure the distance from like point a to point b and once you know that distance that's how you know like how much cable you need to like strangle well, not not like or wrangle that's where i'm going for wrangling not strangling this isn't <laughs> some weird stuff going oh what are you doing hey put those cables down i didn't do anything to you um, imagine she's using zip ties instead of Velcro in 2020. Hey, I like zip ties. They're fine. I know Velcro does a pretty good job too, but it's a matter of preference. I'm well overdue for an upgrade. I'm still rocking a 4770 Haswell. Doesn't hurt me playing a MMO. It's a big upgrade in year two. with snagging 10 card benefit me. A little bogged down. Um, if you, you your CPU is still solid, honestly, if you go with any GPU, you'll still be fine. Uh, if anything, the bottleneck would probably happen if you go with like a 20 Ti. But if you're aiming a, for a 1080 or maybe a 2070 Super, I think you'll be fine. So, do 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 do. Is it true that you guys give? No, we do not. 
It is not true. It's just being, people are being goofy. So, you know. How long have y'all been making PCs and do you have parts on the house or do you order them? Uh, we've been making PCs for over now 10 years, since 2009. Um, do, uh, we do have parts in house, but sometimes depending on cases, we might have to order them to bring them here. But again, those are special cases. For the most part, we have everything here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fantex. Fantex is great. I've been doing this since I was eight. What? I've been messing with PCs probably since I was... Probably for about like eight years or so I've been messing with PCs. I started with laptops, actually. Because that's what I've had for PC gaming. That's actually how I got into PC gaming was laptops. But as I quickly learned over time, laptops, unfortunately, you cannot upgrade. And it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, that the only upgrade for a laptop for the most part is to, uh, to get a new one or just up, try to, I mean, even if you do an up RAM upgrade, it's still not enough. So actually speaking of laptops at home, I'm working on a project on one of my older laptops to, uh, copy my hard drive to an SSD to essentially give new life to my old laptop because the hard drive is super slow. But if I'm updating it to an SSD, it's night and day is SLI really dead. I wouldn't say dead, but it's on life support. <laughs> people use it. It's still an option for some people. Some games do support SLI slash NVLink. It's there. If you want to get the best performance, though, it's, I mean, the most, every game supports one card. Not every game supports two cards. That's pretty much it. How often should I change my thermal face or in CPU or GPU? GPU, I don't think you should touch, to be honest, unless you've had the GPU for a while. And even then, that's such a... I would be careful with that project. But the CPU, um, I would say maybe like every five years. Check it. Um, but if you're like really pedantic about that kind of stuff, maybe every two years or so. Because thermal paste can last a while. Like, again, once you, once it's flush with the, the, the plate, it never moves. You're not going to move it. Like, you're never going to go like, ooh. But if you do, for whatever reason, open up, you have to clean it up and put new thermal paste. But for the most part, it's always going to be uh, together. So I feel like you're Penn and Teller. Omar Teller, silent used body <laughs> language to communicate. <laughs> That's actually a solid description of the stream. The thing is, Omar has a microphone. He can talk. He Yes, you do. He has a microphone. It's right there. I, I give him so before the stream I was I, I test Omar's microphone and it's work we have it set up he can totally talk he just doesn't want to talk I'm the one that does all the talking here so I mean I, I guess if you want to hear Omar's or his voice you can try to convince him but I'm the one that you're gonna get sorry upgrades for laptops M.2 SSD repacing yeah that's the thing your your options for laptops are extremely limiting I know there are okay so. I know people are gonna correct me. There are some laptops you can possibly upgrade, but those are far and few in between, and they're the thicker ones. I know our Eon laptops you can, but we don't really want to like promote that because sometimes it might like if you get the laptop now you could upgrade to the twenty. Let's say you got twenty six in your laptop, you could upgrade to the twenty eighty. However, you, you're running the risk that it might not be able to upgrade to the three thousand series because maybe they might change the chipset or there's a lot of brouhaha with laptops, but for the most part. On average, 90% of laptops you can't upgrade, at least the GPU and the CPU. There are a handful that you can upgrade this, the CPU and GPU, but again, those are very few and far between. And I know ours, you could, but that's a stretch. And I don't want to go out promoting that you can do it, but it's a stretch. And I would always say, if you do want to upgrade your laptop, talk to our support team. They will tell you if it's possible or not. Has Corsair changed the way you do things around there regarding the builds? They changed the way I eat my pizza. <laughs> uh, my CPU runs eight. What? Time out. My CPU runs eighty nine C idle. Is this okay? No, it is not okay. I hope that's not a joke. <laughs> if it's a joke, that's pretty funny. But that's horrifying. No, that is not okay. Uh, something is wrong. Our a temperature sensor is off. Something. I would definitely check uh, other applications to see if something's wrong. Yeah, that is definitely not. He, just look, he puts a kappa. What a clown. What a clown. Anyways. 
Uh, he's the Clippers on the wire. Did you use Clippers on a wire? Someone's calling you out. I didn't see it. I'm too busy reading chat. Yeah. Omar is a mime. I have a thing on my PC. <laughs> what are you doing? What is this? I have a thing on my PC that tells me the temperature of my CPU for a while now. It's been reading 10 degrees higher than usual. Do you think the thermal paste needs to be replaced? Uh, Chameleon, I would definitely check another application just in case it's a double. If it's, that other application says the same thing too, definitely for sure uh, check the thermal, uh, reapply thermal paste and check the cooler to make sure that. Uh, I don't know. I'm, again, I'm assuming I don't know what cooler you have, but if it's an all in one cooler, um, depending on how long you've had it, it could be maybe time to replace. But if it's a uh, heat sink one, like the giant heat sink with the fan, maybe you want to make sure that there's no dust buildup or anything like that. The Penn and Teller analogy wins me a new PC, right? Right? No. <laughs> Got an old PC with a 1030 GT in it, second gen i5. I would like to get my FPS to shooters like R6 running 6070. Hmm. Your second gen i5 is still solid, but if you up your GPU, you would definitely get more performance. That That's without a question, especially for Rainbow Six. I think if you go, if you can score a 1060, for sure, you're gonna see a performance difference. That i5 second gen could probably last like you're on you're nearing the edge of the lifetime for that second gen i5. You can only get a little bit out of it, and some games like I know for a fact PUBG might have issues playing that one, but Rainbow Six I think should be okay. Does this work as a tutorial? I want to consider it a tutorial, but it's definitely something I guess if you want to see like how a PC is built, it's definitely good to like see how we do it because not every case is the same. If you do build your own PC, I definitely recommend checking out. Um, there are some guides online to do how to do it and to see if other people have built in your case before because they can point out things that are specific to your case that you might not, that other videos might not cover. So definitely uh, check that out. It was a joke. Don't ban me. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was a funny joke. We're not going to ban you. Now, if you said if it had 144 hertz Celsius, I'd be like, that's... A, uh. Um... If I go custom, what is the work to do this? What do you mean, Atomic? I'm not sure. Yo, all-in-one fan in the rear case facing or non-out. It's a matter of preference, like the push-pull um, fan location. As long as the air isn't stuck in the case. That's the one thing you want to make sure at all times is that the air at least has a way to get out. No matter what angle, at least the, the air is like flowing out of the case in some way or form. Because technically, there's so many ways you can do a uh, airflow situation. You just want to make sure the air goes out. You don't want to keep air in. That is a huge no-no for PC. It's like maybe for whatever reason you messed up and you had all the fans aiming inwards. What? And there's no airflow out. No, that's a big no-no. Don't do that. You want to make sure there's at least something that has the air go out. Air goes in. Air goes out. Unless you have some crazy design that I haven't seen before, but that's pretty much the standard <laughs> across the board. Uh, da, 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 da. Don't worry, Chad. I'm kind of behind. I'm trying to catch up with the, the questions and the comments. Would you recommend a specific manufacturer for the 2080 Ti? Is it one much better than the other? Honestly, it's a matter of preference. Um, you can see, I know there's, if you honestly just read reviews, it, 2080 Ti should be the same on average, but like some are a little perform a little bit better, like a little tiny pinch better than others. And you might even have to pay a premium just for that, too. Um, because, of course, there's the Fountain Edition 2080 Ti. That's like kind of like a baseline one. But then you have like other cars that are a little bit slightly better. But I'm not talking like massive jumps. I'm talking like tiny, tiny jumps, like maybe two or three frames per game. So, But I do, will say that the third parties probably do offer better cooling solutions. Because, uh, Omar, if you want to move one of the cameras closer to the EVGA one, you'll see how big the heat sink is on the this EVGA car. This is just an example. So EVGA is a third-party manufacturer for uh, GPUs, right? So they make their own uh, heat sink solution and the cooling solution. So you'll see that heat sink is massive. It's huge. And then you have the fans underneath uh, and then it has also RGB cooling and um, other unique features unique to that EVGA design. Um, but again, it, it varies per thing. You just, I would say just read reviews and see what people say. But for the most part, I think all the ports should be solid. So, what are some good resources for someone brand new to building a PC? 
you wrote to me this message on YouTube. YouTube is an incredible source for that sort of stuff. I know that I think Paul's Hardware has a good resource. Uh, Jay's on almost every all these people on YouTube that make um, videos probably have a guide. I know Linus has like a 30 minute video about building a PC. Like there's so many people online that make research on how to build PCs. Our videos are cool. I feel like these are a good showcase. Um, not necessarily like a how to, but it's just cool to see like how we build our PCs as an example. Like I'm not going to be going step by step. Like this is when you need to do this thing. This is when you need to do that thing. Cause um, Omar and PJ, when they build, they build kind of differently. Um, so their methods of building are slightly different, but if you want like an actual guide for sure, check out YouTube videos and look it up. So, or go with us, just order an origin PC. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, I'm looking up. How much better is a 240 millimeter radiator than 120 millimeter? It's better cooling. That's pretty much what it boils down to. Um, Cause you have more radiator space. So obviously it's better cooling performance. Um, and also you use, oh, that, Omar's done. You use, um, more space for the 240, use less space for the 120. It's definitely the cooling performance. There should be videos out there that explain that better than I just did. All right, let me see if I can, can the PC run across? Yes. Remember to clean PCs? Okay. Oh no. Um, what is everything that's included in the build? Let me go over the specs one last time while Omar's finishing up the, uh, let's see. Here is, Caleb's PC. It's an Origin PC Millennia, powered by Corsair RM 1000i series, 80 plus gold power supply, MSI X209 Pro motherboard, uh, Corsair H150i Pro RGB all-in-one uh, cooler. That is for the CPU. Corsair LLIQ RGB fans. The CPU is an Intel Core i9 7980XE CPU with 18 cores. Woof. A single 11 gigabyte Infinity Force RTX 20 Ti. 64 gigabytes of RAM and then 14 terabytes of storage. Two of those, two terabytes of those being an SSD. All right. How much is it? So I spec'd out a similar PC on our site. It came out to close to 5,100, but this one might be a little cheaper, I think, um, just because of the CPU difference. All right, I'm gonna try to quickly read. Uh, YouTube broke. Yes, it did. Um. I have learned how to cable better by matching filling streams. Oh, that's awesome, Hooded Reaper. I know I have too. <laughs> when I was doing my piece of build, I'm, I was like thinking like how Omar and uh, PJ did their uh, their cable management. I followed a similar uh, strategy. Actually, PJ gave me some pointers too on my own PC build on how to improve it slightly. So, uh, yo, can I get some advice? I need to transfer data from my old uh, laptop to a new shiny PC. I don't want to lose any files. I'd like to keep my apps preferably. What's the easiest way I can do this? Um, there are some software out there that you can use to essentially clone the drive. My recommendation is to possibly clone the drive or to transfer all your data from one drive to the other and treat that one as a backup and then transfer to your new PC. There's just so many ways you can do it. Um, but obviously don't format your drive and try to keep all your files safe. Like when you're doing your data process, don't mess anything up. Don't turn off something that shouldn't be turned off. Just try to keep your data safe. In terms of the files and the apps, like if you want to keep your apps running though, I think unfortunately like for games, you have to like reinstall. Um, but for Steam, it's kind of easy just transferring the files over and then clicking install game and then Steam verifies the files and treats the game as a new install. Hopefully that helps you, but there's videos online that help explain that a little bit better. Thoughts on build 2070 Super with Ryzen 5 37 X, that works. I mean, stock cool, you could probably go with something else a little bit better, like maybe the big uh, Be Quiet or uh, Noctua's Stocks are fine. I prefer the bigger uh, uh, heat sinks, personally. Can you explain the difference between DDR3 and DDR4? It's just like, the, depending on the, I mean, there's a better technical explanation, but the, the short version is basically DDR4 is newer. A larger radiator doesn't always mean better cooling. It's true, but it does help, uh, especially from 120 to 240. 240 to 360, not so much, but 240, I think, is a sweet spot for all-in-one uh, radiators. Uh, okay, I'm fully caught up. Awesome. Cable management on point. Is there someone available to speak when ordering? I don't want less more than I need. We have our sales team, and they typically work with you to uh, try to build the PC out to what you need. 
um, especially if you know exactly what you're using the PC for. I I need to use this piece specifically for World of, War, World of Warcraft, or I need to get a PC to do what Caleb does and make special effect videos. Like they'll spec it out for you to the best of their ability, and so make suggestions based on uh, what you need. Um, and so you gonna test the PC and test the game? No, Omar has a nice beard. <laughs> So still looking for tips. Also my first build. Um, look up videos. Just got to look up videos for sure. I mean, you're here, so you saw how a PC got built. But again, don't follow us as like a full step-by-step -step guide because this is a two-hour long stream. I would definitely highly recommend checking out like the 10-minute or 30-minute videos on YouTube on how to build a PC. Um, Omar, are you going to do a post-test? All right, he's going to do a post-test. So I've answered so many of your questions today, guys. I'm glad that you guys have been sending them over and I've been doing my best to answer them. Like, and I hope I've answered them to the best of my ability. I know I, I don't claim to know everything, but I do the best so that I can to answer your questions. PSU stands for poor uh, pizzas, pizza slices underground. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's power supply. I think it's power supply unit. Yeah. So... Oh man, going dark. going dark. Ah, I'm gonna turn my camera off. My light's on though. Ah, see you. All right, so Omar is there. You can still hear my voice. So, <laughs> when is the BBB between you and Omar best beard battle? I don't know, man. Are we good? Let's see. Yes, we are good. We posted. Hooray. Look at that. That's Caleb's build right there. Uh, the EVGA card has some uh, RGB lighting on it. The, as I mentioned earlier, if you guys caught it, for those of you that were actually here uh, throughout the stream, uh, the Millennium has RGB uh, strips already on it. Uh, the fans are There's a fan there, but on top of the case. Omar's going to slowly pan to the top of the case. There's three uh, RGB fans there, too. Oh, that fan's uh, RGB is not. Uh, maybe it could be the connection, but we'll take a look at it. But it's on. Uh, the RGB on the RAM is also on too. Does the board? Oh yeah, sorry, it's, it's an X299 board. There's no RGB on the board because this board doesn't have it. So, um, oh no problem, uh, Senderle. Greetings from Brazil. Greetings from Miami, Florida. Ew, the drive cages. I know it's not for everyone, Jacob, but you know it works out in this situation because uh, Caleb might need more storage. I know for me, my personal build, I have no hard drive cases, zero. Those RGB strips need a fusion. Never cared for the raw appearance of LEDs on a strip. Let's comment there. What kind of cooler would you recommend for the 2080 Ti? Thanks for answering the questions, you guys are awesome. Um. I mean, are you talking about like adding a um, a water block to it? Is that what you're asking? Because for the most part, remember every um, GP or the majority of GPUs already come with uh, the air and the heatsink already attached to it. But if you're talking about the water block, I don't know. That's tricky because I know Corsair. We do offer a Hydro X cooling here at the company, and Corsair does offer the Hydro X cooling kit on their site. If you do want to add liquid cooling to your GPU. But do be warned, that is an enthusiast uh, build attempt if you're trying to do that yourself. So, like, personally, and I guess because the fact that we do work, uh, we're here at Origin, we're, we would recommend the Corsair kit. But there's still other options out there for you. I have the NZXT H440 case. It's pretty good, but I don't like the hard drive page. It looks like some of the 28 Ti's have fans and some have water blocks or hybrids. So if you has uh, the hybrids are typically the ones that already have like liquid cooling inside. So you don't need to attach like ex out external liquid cooling. You just attach the fan and the radiator somewhere in the case. Uh, the water blocks, you do need uh, liquid cooling external. Like the, um, you need the pump, uh, the reservoir, the tubes, the liquid, and then the, the fill. Uh, 
Oh my gosh, what do you call those? Uh, the little things that you use to attach. I can't believe I forgot it. Oh my gosh. Fittings, fittings, that's the word. I knew it started with an F. You need the, the fittings, you need all this stuff, and of course you need to, uh, if you're gonna build it yourself, build it yourself. Or have us do it, because we do offer hard line and soft line tubing options on our site with uh, an accomp accompanying uh, premium attached to it. Um, for the most part, Royal Machis, I would just recommend going with the fans. Um, if you really, if you're willing to spend the extra money though, um, possibly look at the hybrids, but do know that you need to have somewhere in your case to fit the radiator and the fan for that, because you do need to cool the GPU if you do that. Basically, uh, if you see the CPU cooler, you see how there's those tubes coming out from the CPU cooler, there would be tubes coming out of the GPU going out to a radiator. So, what is the advantage of liquid cooling? Personally, I'm not too big of a fan, um, but the all-in liquid coolers do have the benefit of just taking up less space in the computer build, but if it's uh, custom to cooling, honestly, aesthetics. Uh, performance is kind of like a super minor boost but I'm talking like real minor. Um, it's just like, it's mainly aesthetics just to make it look really cool. Me, I'm more practical. I like, uh, actually I have two builds at home now. I have one with an all-in-one liquid cooler and the other one uh, with um, a heat sink. So yeah, air coolers just, I do, I love heat sink air coolers. I think they're perfectly fine. So, Although I will say, I'm not going to lie, on my other build, which I do have the all-in-one liquid cooler, it's kind of cool to have that all that empty space there. It's like, oh, wow, look at all that space there. It's so, like, there. You can see the motherboard. It's kind of cool. So, but just when, The other thing is I also like the, the look of the, the heat sink because it looks like a giant engine on a car, like a muscle car. Like, like there's the, the cooler, and it's very daunting. Matter of preference, both do perfectly fine. If I bought a 9900K, I would go IIO if my 38X runs on air like a champ. See, I mean, you could honestly, you could run. Uh, that's a stretch, but I would, you'd probably need like the high end uh, Be Quiet or Noctua coolers for a 9900K. Not like the smaller ones from Cooler Master and stuff like that. I'm planning on building a cheap water cooling loop next when next gen NVIDIA products launch. Good luck, Jacob. That is not an easy journey. I can tell you right now, I have not done water cooling myself. Omar, you've done water cooling before, but it is not easy. It is not easy. But if you can do it, by all means, that, that is definitely enthusiast building for sure, if you can pull that off. Congratulations, you can. Which of these 7 XC should I buy? Eh, matter of preference. I know there's videos out there that compare the different brands, so if you want to look those up, you can check. All right, I'm going to give you guys uh, three minutes for questions. And uh, do that. Cheap and water cooling in same tens. I know. I mean, you could probably get away with something, but there you go. Do you stream every build? Not every build but every import nah, we stream every so often live builds so what about reliability durability of both systems so if you want reliability i like heat sinks better than uh, liquid because i think like the point in which radiators and the liquid cooling inside kind of like eh, deteriorates is like five years or so wow just called customers not important <laughs> Look, look at this guy. <laughs> hey, man. My build is important, but I didn't show it on stream. <laughs> Gonna build my PC tomorrow. Any tips? Uh, you, YouTube videos. Um, guides. And, and if you tune into the stream, you can probably see some of the cable management thing or tricks that Omar did. So. Rip. Make the Steven Seagal sound. No, you're ruining me. I made it through the entire stream without mentioning Steven Seagal. The whole thing. And you have to come in here and near the end of it, just hit me with it. Question, do you guys get neck back pain from building PCs so much? You just take breaks. I mean, you're just standing a lot. Um, we have standing tables so people can adjust. So you can sit down or sit down on like a, a chair and mess around with it or stand up and build it. I like building them standing up, but or maybe swapping between the two, like standing up and sitting down. So Steven Siegel, now I am intrigued. I saw a bunch of seagulls this past weekend. I went to the Bahamas. 
when we were having lunch, there's like a swarm of them. I've never seen that many seagulls. It's kind of horrifying. It's like in Finding Nemo, no lie. Like people were giving them food, and I was like, "Don't give them food, dude. They're they'll just swarm you." I could have sworn they were about to attack a kid holding like a sandwich. <laughs> give me the sandwich. <laughs> so, yeet. Now we're about to yeet that kid right there. Thank you for time answering questions. Hopefully, order next week. You can have the inside GPU. No problem. So if you want, you can also talk to our support, uh, not support, our sales team if you have any more questions. Uh, I do my best to answer them, but our sales team should probably helpfully narrow it down for you. Sand cables are nice. Yes, they are. Ah, cover food. Yeah, for sure, man. Whew. When I was eating my food, I was like, I want no seagulls taking my food. Ruthless. All right, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. Omar, thank you very much. Rocking the build. Look at, look, look at him. He's just like, You really didn't say anything. He has the headset there, guys. I'm not kidding you. It's right. No. Don't take me. No. His name is Tell. I'm Penn. I do all the talking. Oof. Um, but yeah, again, shout out to Caleb. For, thank you again so much, Caleb, for jumping in. I'm sure you saw the PC on the turning on earlier. But again, special thanks uh, to Caleb, to you guys in chat. You guys are awesome. Uh, I guess a couple things before we go. You can see our special offers right now on OriginPC.com, especially for laptops. Uh, our laptops are up to $200 off, and we have a bunch of value attached to them as well. As for desktops, we are offering $75 off across all desktops, including the Big O. So if you want to save some uh, some moolah, go and check over at OriginPC.com. Uh, anything else? No. Wow. Uh, I will say... Um, if you are watching and you do like the giveaways, is to stay tuned tomorrow to social media to see about a very special one, possibly going up tomorrow. And it's about a game or games with uh, someone we've worked very closely with in the past couple of years. Very, very kind, very enthusiastic, uh, very charismatic team. And we're excited to work with them on this one. So. Just stay tuned. How many cuts from your hand, Omar? How many cuts? How many cuts? Like cuts. Like what? Like cuts. Like you know how sometimes when you work on PCs, sometimes you might accidentally cut yourself? Oh. None? You got none? Too many? I lost count. He lost count. Um Oh actually urgent PC. One last question. What this is the last final final question, and then I'm at them out of here. Do you have any plans offering Ryzen 4800 U versions of your notebooks that depend on the manufacturers you get PCB form? I say, wait and see, man. I like. I know that some of us on the team have been looking at those Ryzen uh, notebooks, and we're definitely curious about it. But nothing set in stone yet. V3, nothing set in stone. Just uh, stay tuned. Is all I gotta say. We may or may not. We may not. We may. I don't know. That's not for me to decide. That's for the team. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in for today's uh, live build. I know that we probably have some more stuff coming up soon. Um, in terms of streams, I'm looking at the calendar. There's really not too much happening right now. But I do know that March is going to get a little crazy. Um, so if you are watching and you like, do like tuning in, I will say that we are going to stream Doom Eternal and Half-Life Alex. So if you do want to see fresh 2080 Ti gameplay powered by 9900KF CPU of Doom Eternal and Half-Life Alex, stay tuned to those release days where... Uh, I will be playing both. Omar, I, or I might ask you or Marcos to man the controls for Half-Life. But for sure, Doom, I'll be running that one. So it'll be fun. Um, That's it. All right. <laughs> you should put sc screen behind cameras. So you don't have to look away to look at, look at yourself. <laughs> Omar doesn't, he doesn't normally look at the camera. He's looking at the camera now. Look at, he's giving the, the camera that, that, that's a creepy smile. What are you doing? stop making the faces get out of here get out of here anyways guys thank you so much we'll see you next time bye bye